Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video, and today we begin Rampa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls. I am so excited, it has been a very long time since I played Rampa 2 Goodbye Despair, which is the last Rampa game I played. Uh, we obviously played one and two back to back, and then we uh, took a hiatus, and then after that we read Dong and Rampa Zero and the If story, uh, the uh, that that's included when you beat Dong and Rampa Two, and that was a fun time. And now finally we are back playing a Dong and Rampa game. We are here for Ultra Despair Girls. I'm recording this not long before you'll see it, like like a little under a week, uh, you know, or whatever, like not not that long before you see it. But I I do plan to play a lot of the game and to play the game rather quickly. So I probably will be. I mean, who knows? I might be finished with the game by the time you guys see this, but I should be pretty deep in whatever. I have no idea what the thumbnail is gonna look like, but whatever it is, don't worry. It whatever whatever I end up going with, whatever is procured for me, and then, you know, whatever. It won't be anything spoilerific. I'll be all good, obviously, with whatever that looks like. But, um, all I know is I'm jumping into this game, and I know almost nothing about it. So I know nothing about the story. I don't know where it takes place in the timeline, which is actually very important. And I'm very curious as to what this game is. One is going to be, and two is going to look like. Now, there was the poster, and I'm trying to remember it, and I'll probably pull it up on the screen, and I'll actually, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to uh, see if I could find it. I'm going to go through my Rampa 2 stuff and see if I could find it. Um, there, there was a picture, right? Yeah, there was the poster. There was the poster of a girl with a megaphone. A girl I don't recognize, like gonna shoot a Monokuma in Danganronpa 2. Which is most likely related to this game, potentially. Now... I have three theories. There's three potential places this could fit into the timeline. And I will, uh, I will, uh, probably, uh, this, this video could take place in between Danganronpa 0 and Danganronpa 1. If this game is after Danganronpa 0 and before Trigger Happy Havoc, Ultra Despair Girls most likely refers to Junko and Mukuro, and we're playing as one or both of them in this game. We could also, this could, uh, with, with a Junko and Mukuro related game, that could be really interesting. You could also involve the remnants of despair in the, in the narrative, and we could get a lot of stuff involving a lot of the characters that were featured in Danganronpa 1 and 2, uh, especially, more so Danganronpa 2, uh, but that would, could be a really interesting story. I don't know what that would be. I guess it would kind of be a little like Danganronpa Zero, but I guess more directly focused on despair and more focused on, like, the events that lead up to the tragedy, right? I think that'd be really interesting. Um, or it could also be, like, kind of, you know, within the tragedy itself. However they want to portray that, Having the game take place in between Danganronpa Zero and Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc would be really interesting and is certainly one of my main theories. I do think there's a very good chance that this is a Junko Mukuro game potentially also involving the Remnants of Despair. Now, that's the first possibility. And I think if it's between Zero and One, my prediction is this is going to be a Junko and Mukuro game. The second possibility is this game takes it place between Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair. Now that could be really interesting as well. That would mean this takes place after Junko's death, but could involve a set of circumstances. It could potentially involve... This would allow us to involve the Future Foundation and potentially even the Future Foundation that um, Toko, Taka, uh, Hina... No, sorry, not Taka. Toko, Hina, Hiro, Kyoko, Byakuya, and Makoto are a part of. 
um, that future foundation before they betray the future foundation, as we find out in Dog and Rampa 2. And if that's the case, it, it could also directly link into Dong and Rampa 2. We could have ultimate, uh, we could have the remnants of despair again play a huge part in the story, and specifically uh, Izuru Kamakura, who obviously we became familiar with in the previous game, Dong and Rampa 2. Um, I think. The game taking place between 1 and 2 would be interesting because we learned at the end of Danganronpa 2 that things have started to quiet down, that the world is kind of trending, slowly trending towards returning to normal, and that kind of lends itself to... That kind of lends itself to being a little less exciting post Danganronpa 2, so that would allow itself to be... Um, that would allow itself, Danganronpa, uh, that it might be more exciting for this game to take place in the timeline between Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair, because things in the outside world are a little more chill uh, post Goodbye, or around the time of Danganronpa 2. Um, the third possibility, and perhaps the most likely one nevertheless, is that this game simply does take place after Danganronpa 2. Now, if this game takes place after Danganronpa 2, and I guess similarly, if this takes place between 1 and 2, my biggest thing is, who the hell are the Ultra Despair Girls? What I like about the theory of this game taking place in between 0 and Trigger Happy Havoc is, that allows the Ultra Despair Girls to be referring to Mukuro and Junko, that makes perfect sense. If it takes place between 1 and 2, I'm a little more unsure as to who the Ultra Despair Girls are. Now, it's possible the villains of the game could be girls, like, right, like a pair or a group of girls, and that could be the title. Or, the protagonists are girls, and they are the Ultra Despair girls, whoever they are. Um, I don't know. And now, again, I've seen the po what I think was a poster for this game in Danganronpa 2 that showed a girl that we haven't met, as far as I know, certainly don't recognize, with the uh, megaphone that looks almost seems like some sort of gun, uh, pointed at a Monokuma. Now, it's possible she's the protagonist of Ultra Despair Girls, but even then, the title is Ultra Despair Girls, plural, which means there's at least two girls that the title is referring to. So even if that girl is one of the Ultra Despair Girls, she can't be the entirety of the Ultra Despair Girls. Now, similarly, if this game does actually take place after Danganronpa 2, that doesn't rule out the possibility of the Remnants of Despair being involved in this game, because the Remnants of Despair still exist. And, um, you know, Sonya, uh, Sonya, Kazuichi, um, Fuyihiko, Akane, and our boy Hajime all um, obviously survived the... Uh, the killing school trip in Danganronpa 2, but given the nature of how Danganronpa 2 ended, they left it very ambiguous, and there is certainly a possibility that the rest of the remnants can be potentially saved, and there's a chance that we could see all of the remnants again, even a post-Danganronpa 2 uh, universe. So, and, and it's possible that they could, you know, be remnants or be, you know, saved, so to speak. So there's a lot of there's a lot that's up in the air as it pertains to the characters from Danganronpa 2, so even if it's a post-Danganronpa 2 universe, there's still a world where we could see them in this game. Now, if it is a post-Danganronpa 2 universe, I don't know what the hell we do with the story, and I don't really know, because I feel like if it's, if, it's, if it's between 0 and 1 or between 1 and 2, you have the chaos of the tragedy to play with, and you could do really interesting stuff with that. Um, if it's post-2, I don't know. Because obviously the Danganronpa 3 anime is going to be after Danganronpa 2. And possibly this game, um, directly after this game. But we don't know where this fits in the timeline yet. The thing with Danganronpa 3, though. There's two things I know about Danganronpa 3. One, I know the title of the series is The End of Hope Speak Academy, which is very interesting. And the other thing I know about Danganronpa 3 is that the arcs... Um, is the way you're supposed to watch it. You're supposed to flip from each... The, there's, like, two different arcs. I think there's an arc at the end, too, but there's, like, two different arcs, and um, you're supposed to flip back and forth each episode, which is which makes sense uh, a nightmare to even think about. But the point is, is that because that's the format for watching uh, Danganronpa, two, uh, Danganronpa 3, um, 
I know that there's two different arcs and we're supposed to flip back and forth between them, which makes me think that one of those arcs takes place in the past. And another reason I think that is because the title is the end of Hope's Peak Academy. And I don't really know how Hope's Peak Academy could have anything to do with a post Dong and Rapa 2 world, although I'm sure they'll find a way anyways. But I could, I, I, my theory is that half of Dong and Rapa 3 takes place in the past, probably post Dong and Rapa 0, but like, you know, right, to, you know, as we get to experience more of the tragedy stuff. And then the other half takes place in the present at that point, right? Like post Danganronpa 2, further further in the future than anything we've experienced in the universe so far, and acts as some, something of a finale for the series. But we get a combination of closure on how this all came to be, while simultaneously getting some sort of finale to the series, and then V3 is whatever the fuck V3 is, because I do know that V3 is kind of separate from the other games, whatever that means. I don't know what exactly what that means, but um, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. So I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards this game being between Danganronpa Zero and Trigger Happy Havoc. But the thing that makes me pause the most about that time frame is the fact that Danganronpa 3, I think one of the arcs in Danganronpa 3 is going to take place in the past. And if it takes place in the past, it would make the most sense to take place in between Zero and Trigger Happy Havoc. So I doubt they're going to do both this game and like half of the anime like that. And because half of the anime is going to probably be like that, because I, I feel pretty decently about that, now I'm stuck between whether this game's going to take place in between uh, Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair, or it's just going to be the newest thing in the timeline. And I really don't know. Uh, I'm kind of... Mm, I don't know. And I don't know who the fuck... Like, I don't... Like, the girl seems to be a new character, so maybe this isn't going to have that many characters from the past. I don't... I don't know. It's a side story. It's another episode. That's the problem, right? It's another episode. So they don't tell us. Like, another episode implies it's either 0.5, 1.5, or 2.5, but they're not telling us which one it actually is. So I'm really curious to see what this game looks like. And uh, I am aware that this is not a traditional Danganronpa game. I don't know what exactly what that means. Um... But I know that it's different from the other games, so I don't know if that means it's different in the way that, like, Ace Attorney Investigations is different from a mainline Ace Attorney, or if, like, that. But I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about this, but I actually think, and this would line up with the, uh, this would line up with the poster from Danganronpa 2, but I actually think that this game has more, like, proper video game gameplay and based on the the shot, I'm assuming that we get some action, maybe some like uh, gun like related action or whatever the megaphone is supposed to be acts as some sort of gun. Um, so we might actually be playing the most video game esque game on the channel yet. So that's interesting, and I'm sure that'll be fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this game, and I. I know it's a little controversial. I know some people don't like this game. I know some people love this game. I know it, it's one of the more divisive entries. And I know pretty much that's what we have left, right? Because this game's divisive. The anime, I'm, I know I know there's a lot of people that don't like the anime. So I know the anime is divisive. And then um, V3, from my understanding, most people love V3. But people, not everyone likes like the end of the game. So I think that game's pretty beloved. It's just not everyone's into the ending, if I'm not mistaken. So whatever the case may be, though, we're ready to go. It's time to jump in to Ultra Despair Girls. And I and I and I can see the uh the logo, right? So I do have a logo, like a like a shortcut downloaded, and it's it's like a white monokuma. Um So that's interesting. And and they it has like a bandage on over its left eye. I guess that would be where the Monokuma eye would be. And there's also like something taped up uh, like on its cheeks. So don't know what that's about, but I guess if I'm not mistaken, um, I think the other Danganronpa games, I think all the Danganronpa games have a bear as like the, 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 the icon, if I'm not mistaken, but I, all of a sudden I'm like, where the fuck? 
Uh, actually, do I have... Yeah, because I'm just pulling it up and actually looking. Because, like, I think in the past, I, 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 think, I think when I might have started the other games, I didn't actually have the logos up. Yeah, for the first game, it's Monokuma. And for the second game, it's Monami. Um, so, yeah. Because I could actually look at them. But anyways, this one's some white bear that I've never seen before. So, I'm assuming there's going to be a white Monokuma in this that also gets beat up, apparently. I have no idea. Maybe it's going to be another Monami-type character. I guess there's only one way to find out, and that's to jump in. So, without any further ado, I'm clicking play right now. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, we want full screen. Okay, there's, there's all these stats that are actually coming up to launch this. Um... All right, I, I, I think all these stats will be fine. Uh, we'll see how this video go. We'll see how this game looks. Uh, I'm not paying attention to the poster, although the post... Uh, I'm not paying attention. There's like a poster up on the left. I'm not going to show you guys this, but I'm just going to rock with these settings. I just had to change the resolution of the game uh, to full screen, but uh, let's launch right now. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. That that almost looked like Toko, but I'm not sure. Okay. God damn it, that went too fast. I think I might have saw Toko. Also, this music. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is interesting music for Danganronpa. Also, I really like the aesthetic of this uh, title screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I... Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Oh, I want to hit that one more time. Get me another of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. One more time. I need another round. Come on. Oh, I thought it was... I thought it was about to do it there. Whatever. Anyways, uh, let's press, uh, X. Okay, this is really loud, as expected. Yasu's the culprit? As in Yasuhiro? Um, yeah, those are scissors. I see scissors. Extreme. Poo -poo -hoo 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 -hoo. Also, uh, on the right, I see the girl. That's, that's definitely the girl from the poster. On the far left, there's blood covering it, but I can't tell if those are glasses. That might be Toko or Jill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of interesting stuff on this. There's also like a green Monokuma. Up, uh, near, up, up, uh, on the upper part of the screen, above new game. Interesting. Also, I think that picture, uh, on the new game, bottom right of the new game card, is supposed to be, I think, the girl. Because I think the girl has the main character hair thing that, um, Hajime and, uh, Makoto have. So I'm assuming this girl is the main character. Okay, select difficulty. I order you to choose the difficulty level, and there's a duck. Um, so, Koma so they're genocide mode, Komaru mode, and despair mode. So, Komaru mode, working hard for a normal girl mode. I wonder if that means the main character's name is Komaru. Okay. Um... Ultra Despair mode, that makes sense. It's Ultra Despair Girls. Super Ultra Pump Genocide Jack mode for those who just want to enjoy this story. I'm probably going to rock with Komaru mode. Um, I kind of downplay the shit out of my gaming abilities. Like, I'm not actually completely awful at video games, to be completely honest. So, I probably could handle Despair mode without too much issue. Um, but again, this is still, like... Very story driven this series, so I, I think Komaru mode should be fine. Um, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Also, what does voice mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, we want to rock with English, even though Japanese would be great um, as well. Yeah, I'm not sure who that's supposed to be on the right, but on the left, that's again, I think that's the the main character girl. Yeah, okay. I think we got everything. So yeah, let's uh let's click Komaru mode and that might do it. Oh, start game. Um So can I not 
Can I not, like, edit the settings? Can I not, like... Wow, there's really, like, no settings. I'm gonna need to turn down this, like... I think I'm gonna need to turn down the sound. I don't know, maybe not. Cause I like to edit the, the, the settings, but I guess I can't do that until I enter the game. So fuck it, let's start the game. Oh, I like that low. Oh, I really like the loading with the Monokuma eye. Okay, first let's set up your camera. With auto camera, you automatically follow the character you're controlling. And with manual camera, you could control the camera with the right stick, interesting. Okay, so so this is not a permanent decision. Um, I think we'll probably go auto. I, I tend to be I, I tend to kind of like rocking like manual for this type of thing, but I think we'll just see what auto looks like, and if I'm not vibing with it, I can change it. All right, what's gonna happen here? Opening video, anime shit. According to what I've heard, the world is round. Oh, that's um. But I know this VA. Really true? It's, uh, might have the shape of rock candy. Suzuha, Ilya, and Lucy. Like that spiky I can't think of her name right now. Would wrap in a tissue. I think it's like Charami or something. I forget her name. But I don't really but this is Suzuha. Sure. It's not like I've actually seen the shape of the earth. From Steins Gate. Yeah, in the same okay. Way, I've never actually seen most things that are considered common knowledge. Interesting. And there's a Monokuma I ship on the moon. What we take for granted. Huh. We base our lives around such uncertain things. Sure. Well, not that it matters for me. I mean, my world isn't even big enough to worry about stuff like the shape of the earth or common knowledge. It's weird to hear In her fact, talking it's like that, small. though. So small that it's actually a little funny. Hmm. So yeah, this, this is the girl. Is my Interesting that she's voiced by, um, she's got the same voice as Suzu. Whoa, fan service. Whoa. My life doesn't extend beyond these walls. Are you a shut-in? Like a hikikomori? But it's not like I'm a shut-in or anything. A neat? No? I am actually imprisoned. But what? Inside this room. Okay, very Danganronpa. My name is Komaru Naegi. Wait. I'm a completely normal high school whoa, girl. Whoa, 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 whoa! An abnormal daily life. Oh, run that back again. What was your last name? Oh my God, it's Makoto's sister. Wait, what? Seriously? Oh. Well, this just got a little more interesting all of a sudden. All right. Huh. So we're gonna play as Makoto's sister, huh? Let me out. Oh, I Let love. Me out. I love that they're playing the classic music Ever here. Since my imprisoned life began, this pointless defiance became my morning routine. Mm hmm But it was only at the beginning that I was seriously crying and yelling. Sure. You've gotten used to it. It's been a year and a half since Jesus. my imprisoned life began. Interesting. She's Can been imprisoned for 18 a months. Year and a half. So long that I've hey, that's the that's the Hifumi thing on the side, and also it's Junko on the uh, magazines. Adapt. I've learned that firsthand through this imprisonment. Mm. Yeah, you do get used to it, I suppose. But it's not like I've completely given up, of course. If I had, I wouldn't do things like change my uniform every morning. Interesting. I don't know. I you still want to feel clean. Don't want to get my hopes up too much. I get it. Because through this imprisonment, this is really cool. That this is like a full-blown anime the scene. I've horrifying despair that always follows hope. Hmm. So I oh. wonder, because Jeez, of the name of the episode, breakfast? it's about time I'm starved in here. If there's a chance that this girl. But anyway, about this whole imprisonment. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, even I, the victim, have no clue whatsoever. They give you nice food. I've been taken by strange people into this strange place. I wanted Japanese style this morning. Wow. Receiving meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is the only communication I have with the outside. Jesus. I haven't seen the culprit's face or even heard their voice. Huh. I still don't even know why I'm imprisoned here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, um, Dongan Rump. Okay, I'm gonna wait for her to stop talking before I this say my, is my theory. This my world and my daily life now, so it can't be helped. See? 
sucks, right? Yeah, it's My a little bit like the other games. Even began. It's not like I still have hope that something sudden will happen after all this time. That's a very Junko thing of you to say. It's not like I have hope that something unexpected will happen. Oh shit, someone's trying to get in. Huh? What? What happened? <gasps> Could it be? Did someone come to rescue me? Possibly. <laughs> Please, save me! I'm trapped in here! Her voice is I'm a little begging. higher than Suzu, but sometimes Please, you hear the me. Suzu in, the, in it. <laughs> I actually love this voice actress, so... Oh, shit. Monokuma? Wait, are we about to see Monokuma in anime form for the first time? Oh, shit. Yeah, we are. Oh, that's actually terrifying. I love the use of all these themes we've heard in the first two games. Yo, no, that, that boy looks big. Bro, she is shitting herself. Damn, girl is loud in my ears. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so this is what the game looks like? All right. A 3D action. Bro, they're literally censoring her, censoring her panties. What the fuck? Monokuma... You don't need to look over there. Are we about to fight Monokuma? Get away uh, oh, I already, I already hate this. I already, whoa. Okay, I already paused. I need to. I'm sorry. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here that we're gonna look at later. I, I already hate the auto camera. Yeah, we're manual cameraing the shit out of this. I think. Um. BGM. Let's try three. Voice volume at 10 is fine. Let's try that for now. Oh yeah, this is so much better. Are we running out of here? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I figured that out real fast. Okay, he's just following us somewhere. Can we run? Why is Does there a fire? Oh. I can't get through. I guess we went the wrong way. Uh, it doesn't... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, run is... Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. There he is. You took a while because I went the wrong way. Um, Black and white bear? What should I do? What should I do? Yeah, this camera is wonky. I'm not a big fan of this camera, Someone but it's better... It's better... It's better, I think, with manual. Oh, we have elevators. Okay, let's go. Interesting. We have, like, cutscenes. So we have anime cutscenes and we have like 3D cutscenes, like pseudo anime, like game cutscenes. Interesting. So there's multiple layers to the cutscenes, depending on. Oh, you better get in there. You better get in there. Oh shit. Wait, is someone in the elevator? Yo! Togami! My goat! Okay, so. Okay, so this is clearly Future Foundation. So, this is after Dongarapa 1, 100%. So, I was going to mention earlier, um, uh, Dongarapa 1, first chapter. Komarune. And he knows who, he knows who, he, who she is. Um, first, Future first. Foundation, yep, 14th yep, 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 yep. Okay, so this confirms this is either between 1 and 2 or after 2. 100%. Oh, that's sick. Byakuya. Oh, that's sick. Okay, so... I do want to say real quick, and I think, um, I think I'm going to, what's it called? Mm, I'm debating if I want to, no, no, I do not want to skip a bat. What the hell? Um, I'm debating if I want to, what's it called? I'm debating if I want to, um, so in Danganronpa 1, in the first chapter, the first motive they showed uh, Makoto's video had his had his 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 family was uh, like like his his house was fucked up and his uh, p supposedly his parents and his sister were like who knows what happened to them so okay so here's my working theory right now what if the 
presumably remnants of despair, or at least someone working for Junko, captured Makoto's parents and sister, and was keeping them hostage for something. I don't know why, but... Like, it, it sounds like it was insurance of some regard. Like, if worse comes to worse, Junko could use, could leverage people close to the the, the uh, killing game participants to potentially make them kill someone or something. It could, it, it's some sort of leverage, some sort of, um, you know, some sort of gimmick that Junko could use against them. Um... That's really interesting, though. Anyways, uh, um, don't get the wrong idea. Oh shit! Crying. I'm not the one who imprisoned you here. Oh shit! How much of this is voiced? Oh my god! Is like this whole game gonna be fucking voiced? That would be crazy. Or is it just like part of this scene? Or like, I didn't even consider the possibility of this game being voiced. Like for real, for real. Actually, I'm here to rescue you. And also, it is the same VA, which is awesome. <laughs> Future Foundation received intel that a captive was imprisoned somewhere inside this building. A captive, huh? That does sound about right. So the weird thing is, so obviously, um, my immediate assumption is to think that this is in between one and two because uh, Byakuya is so openly working with the Future Foundation, whereas they obviously, the six of them betrayed the Future Foundation. Uh, at some point, which leads to the events of DR2. But what I will say is, by the end of DR2, it sounds like they plan to, like, smooth things over with the Future Foundation and continue working with them. Because while there were d some disagreements in how to handle certain things, they still generally did uh, agree with the Future Foundation in most regards. Also, it's cool to see... I mean, this isn't that far off from Byakuya's old outfit, but I also like that you can see the Future Foundation pin, the, the Mirai pin... Um, on his lapel. Future Foundation? It would appear that intel was correct. However... Mm. Oh, he's interested in the Monokuma? What is the meaning of this? What are all these vermin Monokumas doing here? Interesting. Vermin Monokumas? I guess they're, like, automated, like, to, like, kill people or whatever. They're not being controlled by anyone, unlike... The Monokumas we've seen in DR1 and DR2. Monokuma? No matter how you look at it, the timing is just too perfect. Also, is there a... Ah, okay, it is L1. Nice. So if I want to, I can, um, just like in the previous games, I can make the text box disappear. Anytime I want, that's perfect. Just as we show up, a riot breaks out. No, they must have known we were coming. A riot? Mm-hmm. Interesting. So there's a riot outside. Perhaps the intel itself was a trap to lure us here. Okay. I wonder if this is going to be... I wonder if this game is going to be... The villains are going to be the remnants of despair. That would be crazy. Uh, um... What, what do you mean, Riot? What's going on outside? And that black and white bear thing back there, what was that? What's going on? Also, I'm gonna assume that was Toko that I saw at, at in the uh, in the like the title screen or whatever because we've already we've we're this early into the game we've already gotten Byakuya and you know Toko Toko isn't gonna be that far behind Byakuya. So you don't even know Monokuma? That kind of ignorance must be nice. He was just like that the first time I met him. Makoto, I presume. Him? Oh, this is so nice not having to voice it. Oh my god. There's nothing I love more than playing a visual novel that I don't have to voice. You really don't know anything, do you? I guess I'll tell you. Oh my god. But it will have to wait. Now's no time for talk. Fair enough, I guess. Uh -huh. Ugh. What the fuck? Ugh. Oh, here we go. Another uh, game cutscene. Okay, we got Monokuma murdering Future Foundation members. Here's the word to them. Oh my god. More of them! What should I do? Should. Do you really have an option other than run? <laughs>
It's a hacking gun developed by Future Foundation. Okay. It shoots program codes with electromagnetic waves. Interesting. It appears That's... to be effective against these Monokumas. Yeah, yeah, we just saw that in the, yeah, the last game cutscene. So you should have discerned that from the test shot. Yes. Oh, so you guys just invented it. Interesting. Read the operation instructions included with the gun. You're on Where your Where are own the computer. operation instructions? Are they like... What do you mean? What the fuck? You can run, can't you? Is there like a graphic thing I'm in the gun? I'm now. Bro, I love now Tagami. What the hell? annoying bears, I can't just leave them be. Run, but where would I go? A member of Future Foundation is on standby at the restaurant across the street. Oh my god, is it Toko? <laughs> nice! Let's go, Byakuya, you Hurry beast! Up and go! You're just in the way here. I mean, to be honest, he's kind of right. Like, I'm sure this, I'm sure Kamaru's gonna become a badass by the end of the game, but she clearly ain't no badass just net yet. Also, female pro tag is pretty cool. I mean, technically, it's it's actually the third in a row, but this is the first game that's had a female protagonist. Oh, oh, anime cutscene now. All right. A lot of anime going on, pig boy, wow. Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah, the tragedy definitely going on. And this, uh, they said a riot broke out, so I'm assuming this town was okay up until recently. Jesus Christ. All that blood everywhere. Gotta love the, mono, uh, the Danganronpa blood aesthetic. Bro, I could slap some pig boy. That sounds delicious. Bro, this is so weird. This is it's like I'm watching the Dog and Rapa anime early. Welcome. A table for one? Huh? Bear attack! A bear? Bears! Bears everywhere! Yes, now please! Call the military! Paramedics! Hurry! If we don't hurry! Miss, please keep your voice down. You're disturbing the other customers. Who cares about that? Hurry! All right, fine. Please uh, just be quiet, me, okay? One order of relax. And I wanted stay to hear calm. what the guy was gonna order. Uh, hungry. Hello? Police? Some suspicious girl is <gasps> Bro, I was kind of I kinda of half expected something like that to happen, but I still wasn't really ready. Oh my god, and you're dead. Ah, oh, you gotta love the 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 stone cold murder of Dongan Rapa. Fucking great. I think it's time to fight, girl. I don't think you have much of a choice right now. Someone help me! I don't think anyone's gonna help you. I think you have to help yourself. Riots are breaking out all over Toa City. Toa City, huh? Take refuge immediately. Okay. I don't know if that's a real city or not. I assume it is, but it might be fiction. I, I've never heard of it, so it might be fictional. I have no idea. Obviously, we're in Japan, but... What should I do? They're gonna find me! You gotta use that hacking gun that, that uh, Master gave us. I gotta get out of here. You gotta fight. There you go. There's the determination. Oh shit. Here we go. Here we go. Gameplay? Gameplay? Yep. It's time for a tutorial. If you press the L2 button, you ready the hacking gun. Okay. The right stick focuses the reticle. Okay. If you press the R2 button with the gun out, you fire the truth bullet. Of course. Oh my god. I didn't even think of that. Of course it's a tr called a truth bullet. Press the square button open. Pressing the square button opens the truth bullet selection screen. Okay, so there's all different types of truth bullets that have different effects. Um, break, I assume, means general attack. Knockback is probably like a wind attack. Dance? I don't know. Makes them dance? Maybe? Paralyze is obvious. Move, maybe it makes them like run in the opposite direction, maybe? 
burn okay that that's pretty obvious detect i don't know what detect is and then maybe it maybe it lets you see like x-ray so you can see like enemies behind partitions and stuff maybe and then link i have no idea also link is rainbow so i'm assuming it's the the best bullet you could switch truth bullets with the directional buttons oh okay you can also switch truth bullets outside the menu with the directional buttons. Okay. Try using all the multicolored truth bullets against the Monokumas. This makes no sense. Why is this happening? But how do I... Oh, okay, so... Detect reveal. Okay, whatever. Um. Oh, you like, oh, I, I see how you do it. And then once you let go, whatever you're on, it clicks it. So like here. Okay, so if I, oh, okay, I get it. I, I, I understand how it works. Yep, okay. All right. Is amazing. Yep, I defeated my first Monokuma. Uh, let's try Paralyze. Yep. Okay. Oh, that also killed it. Okay. I wonder if it, these Monokumas are like super basic, and there's gonna be like more. Um... Hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. They're dead. Oh, we have infinite bullets too dead. for some reason. That's interesting. Let's see what burn does. That seems like it did nothing. I got a nice shot for some reason. I'm assuming that's it because I can't move. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're going to cutscene. All right. What is going on? Um, the tragedy, Miss Nyagi. I, I, obvi I assume you're not aware of the tragedy because you were imprisoned probably before the tragedy based on I, I don't know the timeline exactly here but I think we're in between one and two and I think it, it, she said she's been imprisoned a year and a half so I'd be actually would be curious how what the timeline looks like in regards to this game I'm I still haven't confirmed whether this game is before or after dr2 we've only confirmed this is after dr1 um what the fuck huh? who laughed <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Who's there? Uh Okay, actual cutscene now. It's the TV. <laughs> the fuck? Shh, oh my god. Do not tell me the villains are children. Ba 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 bam. Yo. Yo, these are totally the villains, aren't they? Oh my, what the fuck? Hey, Masaru. More like Ultra Despair girls, more like Ultra Despair children, right? I'm really having trouble getting past that, you know? Oh, he's gonna be ridiculous. Who cares? I told you, style is important for this kind of thing. Totally. I mean, if Junko's any indication, style is very important. What? What? Hey, yeah, I was already concerned when she said, please don't violate me. And then she said, hey, kitty porn was a no. What the hey, fuck is, I, this is, this is very Didn't concerning. Didn't I tell you this broadcast was important? This is the Warriors of Hope's keynote address. Okay, the leader. Jeez, what are you so mad this about? This guy's definitely oh, the leader. I you want to play zombie too, huh, Nagisa? Nagisa? Oh my God, he's even a blue boy. Like, like please another Nagisa. Stop. What the fuck? It's just a bunch of kids playing with a dead body. That is actually very disturbing. Uh, Professor X? Charles Xavier? Citizens of Toa City. Nice to meet you. We are nice to meet you? The Warriors of Hope. We are the masters of Mr. Monokuma. 
Oh! This town. This dirty, lame, worthless, like pathetic, good-for-nothing town that's nothing more than a penal colony for filthy criminals. Oh. It is on this site that we've decided to build a paradise of children, for children, by children. Oh. And therefore, all of you adults will no longer be needed. It's a, it's a Good children time. killing the adult story. I, I would not have predicted that in a million years, but okay, I'm down. I mean, fuck, fuck them kids. Like, you know, who, who, nobody likes children. So I'm down for the kids being villains. That's to Toko. Oh my God. Are the Despair Girls Komaru and Toko? Is Toko like a main character in this game? I think Toko's a main character. Yeah, I said just saw one of those was 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 a Komaru and Toko work walking together. Yo! That totally is Toko on the right. Yo, that's sick. Alright. Oh, there's a black yo, there's the white Monokuma. Okay, we're getting a Danganronpa style OP. I love it. Kurokuma. Oh my god, the white bear is going to be called Shirokuma, isn't it? Bro, what the fuck? They're literally black bear and white bear. That's so stupid. Masaru Daimon? Or Daimon? Kotoko Utsugi. Jataro Kimori. No! No, her name is not Monica! Bro, why is her name Monica and why does she not have a last name? Why is it literally just Monica? Oh no. Oh no, I'm having flashbacks to one of my favorite games. Oh man. Oh no. Also, Nagi says Shingetsu, Shingetsu. Interesting. Hmm. Prologue. The Warriors of Hope. Ooh, I like that little. Little. I like that, that little Around music. Around a year and a half oh. ago, a certain incident completely changed the world. So I guess we've properly started the prologue now, even though we've really been in the prologue this whole time, I guess. Apparently, the origin of the incident was a student movement at a certain school. Yeah. Um. What the fuck am I looking at? This looks so strange. Also, I found it took me a second to find Hope's Peak. It's over on the right. Huh. Interesting. But the school covered it up. So it was too late when the world finally realized. Yeah, we got to explore this in a lot more uh, depth in Dongan Rampa Zero, which I did a full read along, a read through on the channel of. And if you haven't checked it out, it was really, really good. And it gives a lot of context on how everything came to be in this world. It's fucking great. So I'd recommend checking it out. And uh, if you want to read it on your own, if you go into one of my Danganronpa Zero videos, I have a link in the description to one of the better translations. So you can check that out. It grew out of control. Becoming a monster that swallowed the entire world. Yeah, that is our understanding between DR2 and DR0. It couldn't have just been some riot or student protest. It had to be something far deeper. It was. That much should be obvious. It did come from Hope's Peak Academy, after all. Yep, where the best of the best reside, and including the big-chested despair goddess herself. Eventually, the incident grew so much in strength and scale that it threw the world into despair. Over terrorism. Recent injury incidents have common source. Okay. DSO News, by the way. Theft, arson, brutality, murder. The violent crime rate went off the charts. Makes sense. Violence spawned revenge, which fueled more violence, driving the crime rate even higher. Before long, a global war broke out. A war not for land or ideals, but only for the sake of war. A war that tainted the world with despair. A pure war. But even with hey, the there's the picture. Chaos, I had complete faith in my world. It's interesting because she looks a bit different there. So it's interesting that, that, that they decided to kind of play with her design a little bit. 
compared to what we've seen her as, even though this is obviously a little ways later in the timeline because she's been abducted for 18 months, so. And even when it felt like I was falling, I kept believing. It's still okay. It's all right. All right, so the bad shit that happened to you happened amiss, like the world was already starting to get sussy, but before it went full out fucking chaos. Then, I found out that seven of my classmates had died suspiciously. I fell further still. Interesting. And I assume that's separate from... Yeah, because you... You wouldn't have been in Hope's Peak, so this is separate from the student council situation at Hope's Peak. Interesting. So there was just a lot of, like, sussy things going on at the same time. But even then, I kept telling myself, it's all going to be fine. Don't be afraid. Interesting. But the realization that it was too late came to me like the ground rushing up to break my fall. A group of men I had never seen before broke into my house and separated me from my family. Okay, we're actually getting direct, direct explanation for what this actually was that we saw in chapter one of Trigger Happy Havoc. The world I had been living in up to that moment collapsed. Everything changed. Sure. And since that horrible and unjust imprisonment, a year and a half passed. So yeah, they've just been keeping her locked away. Interesting. I was supposed to be a normal high school girl. But instead, I became a complacent prisoner. And what was waiting for me at the end of that despair was a despair even deeper, even worse. What's interesting about this is obviously Komaru is the protagonist, but it sounds like... She's going to be really interesting because unlike her brother, it sounds like she has a more like her relationship with despair is clearly interesting. And while she's probably going to be like a very heroic character in the end that that, you know, kind of goes down a similar path as Makoto, it does feel like she has a more like. Like, Makoto did a great job of never giving in to despair, whereas it feels like in some ways Komaru accepted despair. So it feels like her character is going to be a little more nuanced than Makoto, which is pretty exciting, honestly. There's no use in keeping hope. That's what mm -hmm. I was forced to realize once again. Oh, see, it's moments like this where you really hear like you really hear the voice acting and it's like, yeah. You kind of hear, like, she, she's not doing the exact same voice as Suzuha. It's a little different, but I'm just reminded of Steins Gate and just, man, what a great fucking sh show that I need to play the VN for one of these days, speaking of VNs. So it's interesting. This game is like a mix between a visual novel and like an, and like a, what, like a third person shooter, I guess? <laughs> It's really interesting. Also, silhouette happen, bodies. I would have stayed in my room forever. Jesus. And there's more Monokuma's coming. <laughs> I gotta run. That's right. That Byakuya guy said that someone is supposed to be here, right? I feel like if Toko was here, we would have found her already, but... Yeah, I'm not sure how that's gonna go. I will say, this, this game actually looks pretty good. I don't know what I was expecting, but the models don't look that bad. The backgrounds aren't too bad. Like, it actually looks pretty decent. Suit. It's the same as that Biakia guy's. I'm assuming this is the Future Foundation guy, then. <sighs> nice, nice uh, first words, bro. Are you all right? Although it looks like he might be uh, not that far from dying himself. Who, who are you? You shouldn't be here. Hurry up and run. Uh, um, you're from Future Foundation, right? How, how did you know? I, I was told by a guy named Byakuya Tagami to meet you here. Could you be? Are you a captive? Go to the park. Head through this door and go straight down the road. That seems simple enough. There should be a future foundation helicopter there. Hurry, go. All right. But what about you? Yeah! Hurry. 
gotta get out of here. Oh, this guy's about to get cooked. I'm sorry. Wow, and she just says I'm sorry and runs. I mean, to be fair, that's what he wanted. I'll but... take you all along. Wow. I'm so sorry. Damn. I actually like how hard she's taking it that, that that she left and that guy basically sacrificed his life to help her get away. It's actually really sad. Shoutouts to that future foundation guy. Town. It's in ruins. Wow. There's just monokumas. Yeah, we can't even shoot. This is like a weird like side scroller Mom, right now. Makoto. Yeah. It's so weird that we're playing as Makoto's little sister. This is actually so strange. Is that the park? Yeah, it must be. If they have a helicopter, it's gotta be Future Foundation. Oh shit, that girl actually looks cool. Maybe she's gonna be a character. She actually has a distinct design from all the random generic guys. From Future Foundation? Hmm? Um, this guy called Byaka Yatagami said that you guys could rescue me. <laughs> All right. Interesting. What is your name? K Komaru. It's Komaru Naegi. I think they'll recognize that, that name. The information about a captive in this town was correct. Oh, I like her voice too. But maybe she's not important because it's just Future Foundation D. Maybe that's just with a generic uh, female Future Foundation member like design. I don't know. I think her design looks a lot more distinct than the guys. Part of that's the sunglasses, but even still. So, where is Byakuya Togami? Is he safe? He he told me to run, so I I haven't seen him since. I'm sure he'll be fine. I see. I can't reach him, so I thought he might be in danger. Mm. But then again, this is Byakuya Togami we're talking about. I'm sure he can handle himself. Yeah, Byakuya is a beast. But there was someone from Future Foundation getting attacked in the restaurant back there. Please, you have to go save him. Yeah, I don't know about that. Understood. I'll go back for him. Oh, shit. Oh, never mind. Fair enough. I hope we can make it in time. Um, what exactly is going on here? I still have no idea what's happening. I don't know who you are or where I am or anything. Interesting. I see. Well, we don't have much time, so oh I'll God. give you the short version. Future Foundation C is very clearly voiced by the same VA as Byakuya. First off, we're from an organization called Future Foundation. We're trying to help the world recover from the incident. You know what I'm referring to? The tragedy, baby. I don't the think incident. she does, yeah. I mean, she was she was kind of explaining it in the beginning of the after the prologue, but I'm assuming that was more like her narrating than. It's behind your imprisonment. Yep. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. It's so funny every time they say that. It's also great to hear people actually voicing that nonsensical phrase. It was more than just an incident. It shook the foundations of society to the core. Yeah, these are the visuals that we saw in um, DR2. Because in DR1, they only showed the silly stuff. But after DR1, we got to see more of the fucked up visuals. Yep, like these. It wasn't these. just one. Various incidents broke out all over the world. Yep, some of the visuals that were used when describing the remnants of despair. And then the war. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history includes that, too. I'm sorry, but tell me the guy... So if you guys look at the... Uh, so these are obviously like news coverage, like kind of like uh, mosaics, like weird painting, drawing things. The one on the top, the guy second, uh, second over to the right, so the third guy, the third person of the four, kind of weirdly looks like Guy Fury. Because of all of this, the world just crumbled. But in oh, all that shit. chaos. Oh shit, is that is that Iz is that Izuru? Future Foundation is trying the best we can to bring hope back to this world. Yeah, that gotta be that's totally Izuru. I recognize that silhouette from DR2. Yep, yep, that's totally Izuru. Oh, and as for this town. Just like that's totally Tagami's VA. Are you alright? Are you following? Oh yeah, we're following. It's just a lot to take in for the poor girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just a lot to take in, that's all. 
It's hard to hear. I'm sorry, but you need to know. Sure. This town is an island off the coast and controlled by a powerful IT corporation. It's commonly called Toa City. Okay. I wonder if this is a fictional town then. Toa City used to just be a nickname, but now it's hmm. what everyone calls it. Or I wonder if it's a real place, but it's called Toa instead of its actual name in this um, in this story, in this universe. Yo. Ever since the government stopped functioning due to the tragedy. That's pretty cool looking. Toa Group and their cutting edge technology are running the show here. Interesting. Toa Group is a corporation that played a huge role in rebuilding the world. Okay. Ever since the I tragedy, like this. air pollution has made a lot of the planet uninhabitable. Yep, Junko has referenced this multiple times in 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 uh, in DR1 and in um, DR uh, the Danganronpa If story. Um, it's interesting because I really like this music. This uh, OST is pretty jazzy, but it, it it still fits for the series for sure. But Toa Group developed an air purifier that can clean massive quantities of air at a time. Nice! They invented it only three months after the safety order to stay indoors was given. Damn. Even after all this time, people all over the world are still clamoring for it. Okay, so there's still a big supply and demand problem, and obviously getting things from one part of the world to the other is still probably very difficult. Because it's still all in the process of fighting despair. The remnant should still exist if this is, in fact, before DR2. If it's after DR2, there's still, you know, that could be referring to the world finally starting calming down, like uh, was referred to in DR2. But that doesn't mean there isn't still chaos. It's like this city was kind of operating like normal until all of a sudden the Monokuma riots, like I said, apparently just started. That's why the people in the restaurant. We're acting like business, like they were just living their lives before they all got murked. But the clean air isn't the only thing that draws people to this town. It's generally safe. Because of Toa Group's influence, this city has mm. suffered far less damage than others. That makes sense. And because it's relatively unaffected by the incident, it's of special interest to us. That makes perfect sense. But this kind of riot going on in Toa City, this is something we never anticipated. Bro, I love the like the animation this guy doing. Do 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 his fucking arm bouncing back and forth like that is actually pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. So it's a riot. Why is something like this happening? Apparently, those kids. I assume they're like mini despairs. Honestly, even we have no clue whatsoever about what's happening here. Cause um, I believe it. Yeah, Monica was the one that said that they're the masters of Mr. Monokuma, which means it's their fault. Where those Monokumas came from? Why they're attacking the city? Apparently, because those kids are gonna make a paradise of children for children by children, and so they gotta kill all the adults to get it done. And that broadcast by those creepy kids. None of it makes any sense at all. It does kind of terrify me to think about the possibilities of like how those kids got to this stage because i'm imagining there's going to be some fucked up shit with that probably like you know your classics abusive parents stuff like that it's it's going to be i guarantee you there's going to be some fucked up shit with those kids because the fact that they like they basically at the beginning of the episode the uh the actual op for this game it was it was komaru toko the two bears shiro uh kuro kuma and shiro kuma and then it was every and then it was the introductions for all of those characters the warriors of hope that was it those were considered the like main characters so everyone else is an auxiliary character like byakuya he's got a role to play and i'm sure there'll be other characters who have their bit parts but that that's considered the main cast which is kind of terrifying which means that those characters are gonna, those kids are going to get a lot of focus which means their shit's going to be fucked up you know you know it is in this series the only thing we know for sure is that something horrible is happening here. Hell yeah. We need to get more intel, but our priority is to escape. We need to leave, at least for now. Fair enough. Yeah, you're right. We need to hurry and escape. We'd probably get killed in a place like this. And I'm... I mean, I want to see my family again. 
It's been so long. I I hope I hope these uh these people tell her. I mean, it would be because they should know because she did say that she's Komaru Nayagi, and I'm sure they fig you know they the, I'm sure they understand. They they probably know if they know Byakuya, there's a decent chance they know Makoto too. Oh, about your face. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold it. What was that? Oh, god damn it. Uh-oh. Do you hear that? I don't, but I'm assuming if I click again, I'll start hearing it. Is that singing? Japanese singing. Oh, I would love tr a translation for this. Over there. Oh, they just keep going. Okay, uh, comment section, translate the song. I actually need the, I need the translation. And that's something I can't, that, that I'm not going to look that up because I don't want to look at, you, you guys know. I guarantee, because I know it's something horrible. Monokuma. <laughs> oh, it just keeps going. Interesting. Oh god. That's kind of horrifying. <laughs> oh my god, look at how horrifying they drew that Monokuma's right eye. What the fuck? What the fuck? I love how that happened right in front of her. It would have been good cool if you actually used the hacking gun there. You might have been able to Oh my god. I know she's uh she's uh, nervous and scared, but there you go. At least she's fighting back now. Wow. What the fuck? Bro. Bro. I'm sick. What the fuck? Oh my god. Well, that's not good. Yeah, I don't think we know how to fly a plane if I'm I'm guessing. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no way she's gonna die. This is, uh, uh, this is, uh, yeah, it's even the music and the style. It's like the execution. What the fuck? Yep. Ba, 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 whoa. She's literally girl was literally in a plane crash. What the fuck? This is a wild prologue. Well, she survived at least. Oh, is that is that Shiro Koop? No, I assume that's just yeah, okay. That I assume that was just supposed to be the it was just you couldn't see any of the black, just the white. Okay. That's a lot of monokumas, Jesus Christ. Reminded me of Dongarapa 2 or if. Christ, that's a lot of monokumas. All right. So I'm assuming she got captured and now we're going to potentially meet the kids, I guess. Maybe? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, multiple dots. I got to love those ellipses. Hey. Can you hear me? No. Dude, when I heard so when I heard the hey, oh my god, is is this happening? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So when I heard the hey, my eyes kind of like my head tilted to the side a little. I know you you can't see it. But when I heard the can you hear me? One, that sounds like Bryce Pappenbrook. 
and it doesn't sound like Makoto. And two, I gotta click the next line. Are you okay? Yo! He's literally saying the lines! The, 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 this is a reference! The, he's saying the same lines from the beginning of Danganronpa 2. No way. We're about to see Nagito. We're about to fucking see Nagito! Holy shit, Remnants of Despair are gonna be in this, aren't they? Oh my god. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Show him to me. <laughs> you look completely- Yo! Who, who are you? Me? Bro has a literal- oh, my name's not really important. After all, I'm just a lowly servant. Of like, your despair goddess that the person you hate the most, or- Also, he's literally wearing a collar and a chain that goes to nothing. It's just a chain. I heard this town would be safe, so I came here to seek refuge. Then the riots. Oh bullshit, motherfucker. Also, I love that he's just servant. Oh my god, are we like never gonna get his name this entire game? Also, also, I just noticed. Look at his left hand. He's wearing a I think it's he's wearing some sort of glove over his left hand, so you can't see his Junko hand. Oh, this is so good! Yo. I am so here for the- Also, he looks so good in that art. Holy shit. One, his outfit's kind of drippy as hell. He's kind of swagging. But also... What the fuck is this OST? This is... Bro. Bro! This is- This OST is literally every girl playing this game right now. This is their exact reaction. Uh, to representing how wet they get every time Nagito's on screen. Jesus Christ. Don't blame them, though. Not gonna lie. And on top of that, I get what is this OST? I've seriously got no luck at all. Oh, shut the fuck up about luck. I have heard enough of you talking about luck for one lifetime. But because I pleaded for my life, they allowed me to live as their servant. The remnants or the kids? Hmm. Uh, um. Ah, I'm being rude. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Sure, why not? Either you truly are completely yeah, it is exhausted, a glove. or you're simply afraid to wake up and face reality. You were asleep a full two days. Jesus Christ. A, a full two days? This is crazy. I was not expecting Nagito in the prologue. Oh my god. Like, even though I actually was talking about the remnants of despair a lot in the, uh, uh leading up to this, I, I still was just not expecting, like, sudden, random fucking Nagito jump scare. A full two days. More than enough time for the world to change completely. Fair. Yes, even our world can change just that quickly. Like a watercolor painting caught in the rain. Dude, this OSC is wild. Ah, but you're more concerned about yourself than the world right now, correct? This is actually really interesting, because I feel like this is the first time we're ever getting to see true, like, ultimate despair in Nagito. Because... It's a little different than the hope, like, obviously this is a hope-filled Nagito, but this is the hope Nagito that, like, I presume, you know, has, like, become, is willing to, actually did become despair in order for hope to shine even brighter, to be defeated by hope or whatever, right? So it's one of those situations where it's slightly different from the Nagito that we saw, really, in DR2. It, it, he's still very similar, but... He's actually, like, I, I guess in ways a little more mellow, almost. Like, it's interesting. And, like, the way he's talking. Like, it's definitely Nagito, but it's a little different from the Nagito we knew. You're wondering what's to become of you now that you're trapped here in this place. It's such a tease because of all the remnants of despair, this is the one that's probably the, the, simil the most similar to his pre-remnant version. Whereas, like, I want to see all the others as remnants and, like, what they were like after being, you know, touched by Junko. 
What's going to happen to me? So this is such a cock tease. But Nagito is probably my second favorite character in the series. So I'm down to see more Nagito. I probably put him... I probably go Junko 1, Nagito 2, Byakuya 3. I love Byakuya though, so... I got to see my second and third favorite character most likely already in this game, which is crazy. Because I had no idea if either of them were even in the game. Also, there's just a present sitting there. What the fuck? <sighs> huh? Oh, is he already disappointed in you like he was disappointed in Hajime? Uh, apologies. Wow. Your reaction was so normal. It surprised me a little. Dude, his hair is so great. <laughs> you honestly don't have a single unique characteristic. Yep, he's back on his bullshit again. Uh, uh, well, no need to be depressed about it. This world is filled with unremarkable people. I suppose. And the only one capable of empathizing with common, boring people is a common, boring person like yourself. So, that's why you pass. Okay, what does that mean? Wh what are you talking about? Yeah, for once I'm with Komaru on this one. Well, that is just my personal opinion. It doesn't matter to them at all. Them? The remnants are the kids. No, seriously, the remnants are the kids. Are we about to meet the remnants of despair or are we about to meet the kids? This prologue is called the Warriors of Hope, so I'm thinking the kids, but... Which means I'll need you to take a proper test. All right. A test? Sure, I'm, pr I'm pretty good at tests. Ah, but before that, I'll return this to you. Oh, is he gonna give us the gun? Yeah, he's playing some type of game. He's up to something. I wonder if he's... Assuming that it is the kids that he's acting as the servant of, I wonder if he's trying to manipulate the kids for his own objectives. Because we have to remember, this Nagito is an ultimate despair, assuming this is in between 1 and 2, which... I mean, it's it almost has to be. At this point, I'm like 95% sure. There is the 5% chance that the others woke up from their comas and Nagito is still fucking Nagito. But I'm just going to assume that this takes place between 1 and 2 at this point. That seems more likely. The, we already... The hacking gun. That's weird. We already had that. Okay. I borrowed it from you. I mean, the bullet, permission. I mean. Sorry. But I absolutely had to analyze its capabilities. <laughs> analyzing, huh? I know someone that's really good at analyzing. It sure is an amazing little machine. I guess for that type of thing, Chihiro would be a, a great pick. But obviously, I wasn't. That's not actually who I was referring to. A device that forcibly hacks machines by shooting program codes with electromagnetism. A bit absurd, but I've I've heard sillier. However, it was a bit too powerful. Wow. I made a few modifications for game balance purposes. Shut the fuck up! Don't don't do this again. No, fuck you, Nagito. You're not allowed to do this. Not after last game and all of its bullshit that it put me through. No, no, no. Let's not talk about games. Please, for the love of God, let's not make meta jokes like that. Game balance? Yeah, question that. Thank you. Oh, no need to worry. You'll have the opportunity to upgrade it later. Stop, stop looking at me like that, you asshole. I know you're not talking to Komaru right now. Uh, um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Trust me, I don't either. I understand how you feel, but it's about time you started the test. All right. If you can safely make it all the way to where everyone is waiting, you pass. Again, the remnants of the kids. I'm going to assume the Warriors of Hope, but it could be the remnants of despair. Everyone? This is a cool looking facility, whatever, whoever it belongs to. You'll meet them when you get there. Interesting. However, even after you meet everyone, be sure to keep that gun of yours a secret. Interesting. Nagito's on some bullshit after all. Like I thought. If you don't want to die, that is. So he's playing some sort of game. Interesting. I'll be going on ahead. I'm really liking this so far. This is actually really interesting. Like, I'm in, I'm intrigued by this so far. This is a very interesting prologue. What the heck? What 
is going on now? Trust me, girl, I have no idea. So what's in the... Oh. Okay, so now I have two truth bullets. All right. Time for another tutorial. Looks like you have obtained Move. Move is a truth bullet that can activate some machines with super-powered magic... Sorry, super-powered hacking magic. Try it on that power panel with the red light. Oh, and I know you probably remember, but you could press the square button to change ammo. Yeah, if you want to do it like that, but I could also just do it like that. Easy. It's unlocked. I'm scared. And making sure there isn't anything else. I am a very meticulous let's uh not let's player, but when I play games like this, I like to, you know, take my time and I like to get like a lot of the random shit, so I will be uh, probably a bit meticulous and probably um, play at a slower pace than you might be used to with some of the Let's Plays you might have watched. But you guys kind of already know just from watching that even when I do visual novels, like I, I, I talk, I think, more than your typical person. So we tend to get through them slower, which is one of the reasons I do long episodes. Time for another tutorial. Now that you've put in some time with a hacking gun, let me tell you something. The red left eye is a weak point for all Monokumas. Oh, is that what the good shot was that I got that one in when I shot one of them? Yeah, nice shot. That's what it was. Shoot that weak point with break and most Monokumas will go down in one shot. Nice. Plus, after you hit a weak spot, break ammo will give you one power shot. Okay. It's one hell of a shot. One that's way stronger than the regular break. Interesting. Now that's killing two birds with one stone. If you think you're so hot, why not try aiming for the weak point? Sure. Why not? There it is again. Yep. The gun. Oh no. It's weaker. It's like a Monokuma coin. Is this the game balance that guy was oh, talking about? Oh, we have apparently got 50 of them. Interesting. So the gun it actually is less effective too. Okay. Um. Is this the right way? No, it clearly isn't. But I'm just, I'm just checking everything just to make sure. Yep, there's nothing there. All right, so this is where we're heading then. Yeah, that's clearly gonna close behind me. Right? Huh? Yep. Yep. Did I okay. Just get locked in? Yes. <sighs> I should try to move something again. Sure, why not? Should I go up to the room past the stairs? Yeah, why not? It's literally the only option, so I we have to. Uh, that is like a big ass room. That's scary. Also, we only have so we have infinite move bullets. I guess because move is like a mechanic in the game that you have to have to advance. But we only have so many breaks, so we actually have to conserve ammo in this game, which I actually really like. Cutscene. Yep, okay, it is the Warriors of Hope. Interesting. What the fuck? Where's Monica, hey, though? You're those kids. Yes. The kids who were on TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I'm famous. <laughs> I'd autograph your back anytime. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can only write using a chisel. But Jesus. if you don't mind that, I can sign your back, too. Holy fuck. We accept presents as well. I'm always in the mood for sweets. However, salty flavors are no good. Those disgusting tastes are never worth putting in your mouth. Mm, I want to drive a train someday. I can't. I want to go inside a chimney. Um. Maybe I'm reading too into something, but. Um, what's her name? The pink-haired girl. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what her name was. Jotaro. Welcome, big sis. I'm so happy you came, meow. What the fuck? Why did you just meow at us? Okay, I have a few thoughts in my head, so I'm waiting for the scene um, to end. Okay. Uh, so, 
Oh, this is an interesting sounding. This is a very ominous OST. I wonder if this is like the theme for the Warriors of Hope. Um, so I have two. So there are two thoughts. Um, first of all, uh, originally I thought uh, Nagisa was the leader, but Monica certainly seems to be the leader with her Charles Xavier looking ass. But I had a very disturbing thought with Kotoko. See, I didn't make anything. I See, she made that weird joke in, in the beginning, right before the OP. I didn't really think anything of it. But I, I... I noticed what she just said. She was very, very... I don't even know if I want to say it. But, like, I... I'm not sure if Danganronpa would go there or not. But they might. They might. It's just, it's interesting that she, because I feel like most, most like kids like, like sweets, but they also like salty shit like chips and stuff, right? Like what kid doesn't love some tasty ass chips? But she was very, very adamant about uh, not putting salty things in your mouth and how disgusting it is. And that on its own, it w wouldn't strike a chord with me, but when combined with her previous comment, I'm slightly concerned. It, uh, right now, two, two's, two's just a coincidence. If, if, if she says another sussy thing, I'm gonna get really scared, though. If she says one more, it's gonna become a pattern. Oh, that's right. Big Sis doesn't know us yet. Yeah, she referred to us as Big Sis. That was weird. Well, I guess we should start with introductions. Oh, I can't. Okay. I think I am going to turn down the OST, though, because especially Monica talks really soft. I feel like the OST shouldn't be, um... Yeah, I feel like I want the balance to where you can always hear the, 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 the voices way over the OST, so... And I, I the voices are on full volume, so I'm probably going to crank down the OST a bit. All right, let's start with me, the leader. What the fuck does that mean, the square intro button? I mean, I gotta press it. What the hell is this gonna do? I'm the super um, duper leader that unites the warriors of hope with a bang. Masaru Daimon. Okay, so it's Daimon. Masaru Daimon. All right, I got it. Also, what is this theme? And why does he have like fire duck in his eye? What the hell? So you're the leader, huh? You're definitely not the leader. You might call yourself the leader, but it's definitely Nagisa or Monica. My what the fuck? My subject was P.E., so they called me Little Ultimate P.E. Bro, Little Ultimate P.E., what the fuck? What the fuck? Why? Why is that a thing? I'm the P.E. king who can do every exercise ever. Running non-stop 24-7, 365 is easy as pie. Interesting. So he's very athletic. My job in the Warriors of Hope is the hero. What does that mean? And as hero and the leader, I'm gonna be the new ruler of this town. Sure. You're definitely not the leader, bro. So... I'm the leader of the Warriors oh. of Hope. Hero class, Masaru Daimon. Hero class? What is this, like a fucking, like... RPG or something like Interesting I always give 100% my favorite class was Jim so they called me little ultimate PE Okay, so I guess the intros are just like more um, In-depth and you get like cool visuals or something uh -huh. A hero the leader and the little ultimate PE. I even impress myself Fair enough <laughs> You're far too boastful to be a leader. A true leader is calm and dignified. I have to agree, Nagisa. I also like the way Nagisa dressed. He's pretty fly. But I am the leader. We all agreed on it. Something tells me they just agreed so they'd shut you up. All he did was win rock, paper, scissors. Or that. All right. Doesn't matter. I'm still the leader. I won, so I'm the leader. The leader! 
Fine, fine. You're the leader. Now, allow me to introduce myself. All right. I am the sage, Nagisa Shingetsu. I am the vice leader of sorts. Yeah, they really are like classes. So the hero, the sage, that's really interesting. I wonder if that's going to have thematic significance in the game or if it's just like a, a silly kid thing. Like, obviously, it's a silly kid thing, but, like, I wonder if it's going to have thematic relevance to their characters. My name is Nagisa Shingetsu. In the Warriors of Hope, I act as the vice leader and sage. Interesting. So I'm going to assume Monica is, like, the lowest on the totem pole when in reality she's really the leader. When I attended elementary school, I was known as Little Ultimate Social Studies. What the fuck? This is so stupid. Little Ultimate... What the fuck? Of course, social studies is but one area of my expertise. I excel at all scholarly pursuits. Yeah, you seem like the type and dress like the type. I was labeled little ultimate social studies because I was raised to be among society's elite. I mean, you are kind of like in some ways a mini Byakuya, but but you, you seem like less of an ass. But my bigger thing is I have two comments. One, why... Immediately, he doesn't really seem to fit in to the Warriors of Hope. Like, he seems like a kid that's that's growing up almost a little too fast. So I'm curious why he's part of this, um... God, can we call them terrorists? Yeah, I guess they are terrorists. This terrorist group. Um, also... What's really funny is if you notice... Uh, on the on the table directly behind Nagisa, the person on the right is, like, literally having a mental breakdown. That's pretty funny. And I suppose I am a babysitter of sorts for the Warriors of Hope. Monica excluded. Damn. Damn, bro's like, I'm too mature for the rest of them. But Monica, you know, that girl that said, called, called, uh, Komaru Big Sis Meow. See, she, she, she's, yeah. She, she you know, I, I don't boss around the girl in the wheelchair. That's, that's our Charles Xavier. She, she's calling up the plays. She's the quarterback of this team. During my time at Hope's Peak Elementary, I was known as Little Ultimate Social Studies. Why? Why the fuck is there a Hope's Peak Elementary? I hate everything. That is disgusting. It actually makes a lot of sense. Because if Hope's Peak Academy exists, of course they'd want to cultivate talent from a much earlier age. But also, what the fuck? Huh? Hope's Peak? You mean... That Hope's Peak? The one and only. Mm -hmm. Or not. Why should that surprise you? I, I... I didn't know there was an elementary school affiliated with the academy. <laughs> Such an ignorant woman. Damn! Holy shit, Nagisa. Anyway, who's next? Perhaps Jotaro? Oh, we're saving the girls for last, huh? Uh, wait. Before I go, can I practice introducing myself? Oh my god, I love the voice acting for this kid. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, I'm the priest, Jotaro Kamori. Interesting, the priest, huh? You know how doom, when doom, you stare doom. into moving bicycle spokes, you get all scared? That has literally never happened to me in my life, Jotaro, so I don't know. Like, for some reason... You imagine how painful it would be to put your hand in. I have never had that thought in my life, but interesting. Oh, um, my name is Jotaro Kamuri, and bird skin isn't yummy no matter how you cook it. This is factually incorrect. This is just completely incorrect. I was really good at arts and crafts, so... They called me Little Ultimate Art. I'm gonna make a prediction, by the way. Uh, I should have predicted that he'd be Little Ultimate Arts and Crafts or Art. I'm gonna guess that Kotoko um, is, is, is like theater. And I'm gonna guess that Monica is like... Well, let's see. So, P.E., we've had P.E., we've had social studies, but he's good at all scholarly stuff. We've had... Monica's probably either going to be literature or math. Um, 
I'm gonna guess Monica's literature and Kotoko is um Kotoko is uh, a theater. She looks like a theater kid. If it's arts and crafts, leave it to me. I can remove nails and varnish things. I also, I am keeping track of everyone's for names. For I had to actually look at my notes for Kotoko, but oh, it's fine. I think I got all their names at this point. Exist. I think I'm good now. It was a lot of names to throw at me at once, and you guys know how I am with names. But what's nice about Dong and Rapa is anytime they talk, their names on the screen. So I'm able to memorize their names pretty quickly compared to other series, compared to like shows that I react to. And you specialize in arts and crafts, making you little ultimate art, correct? Moving on. Yes. Uh, you said what I was gonna say. The whole thing. Don't worry, Jotaro. We watched your little, like, cutscene thing, so don't worry. You got to say everything you needed to say, to at least to me. Oh, my chest itches. I wish I could scratch it raw, reach inside and scrape my nails on it. You are fucked in the head, kid. Your speeches are always too long. Oh my god, even the way she walks, what the fuck. I feel like I'm gonna like her. She's, she's so, I can already tell that she's gonna be... Such a, such a little bitch. It's like how an elephant's nose is so long. But then again, giraffe necks are long too. Or she's just gonna be weird. And also waiting for a plane takes too long and spring break is too long. She has to be the first girl that's ever complained about spring break being too long. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I agree, Nagi. Uh, I was about to call her Nayegi. Uh, I guess she is Nayegi, but Komaru. Well, anyway, don't worry about Jatero. He's a latchkey kid. It made him a bit mental. Interesting. Okay, so that gets into... I was talking about how these kids have probably went through a lot. So, so he was basically ignored and left alone and shit. I don't know with Monica. Maybe Monica was bullied for being disabled. Um, Nagisa maybe was bullied for being too smart. I don't know. Um, and then uh, the only the only person that I that I, I have a running theory as to what happened to Kotoko. I'm sure one of them was a victim of child abuse. I guess Kotoko might be a victim of something like an even worse form of that. If if my currently running theory is correct. But let's see if she says anything that gives me more information here. It's not that I dislike latchkey kids, though. Some kids say they have magical powers. I like her voice, too. Isn't that awesome? You might get caught inside a magical parallel universe. I don't like that we can see her bloomers. Oh, sorry for the late what introduction. The fuck? My name's Katoko Utsugi, and I play the role of fighter. Okay, so we have what? Hero, uh, sage, priest, and fighter. So I wonder what that leaves for Monica. Ahoy, Hold on. A girl. Yeah, I guess you are a girl. She's got wings and everything. Okay. My name is Katoko Utsugi, and I play the fighter in the Warriors of Hope. You might think the fighter would be a boy, but nope, I'm totally a girl. Honestly, didn't cross my mind, but sure. I love girly things and peeled chestnuts. If it's totally adorbs, I love it. Aren't chestnuts? No, chestnuts are... S I actually don't know what chestnuts taste like, weirdly enough. I, I'm not sure I've even had chestnuts before now that I think about it. Like, I've had peanuts, I've had walnuts, I've had different types of nuts. I'm not sure I've ever actually ate a chestnut. That's interesting. Also, they have to be peeled, huh? And I was pampered as a Yo! I got it right. I said theater, but sure, dr little ultimate drama actually is more fitting for her because she seems like she she'd be involved with a lot of drama. Dude, I love how they're just random fucking aliens. What the fuck is she even supposed to be here? What the hell? But who cares about that old stuff? I'm so happy to meet you. Aw, I'm glad you're happy to meet me. I'm happy to meet you too, Kotoko. And back to the regular intro, I guess. The other intro. I was called Little Ultimate Drama, but that was a long time ago, so I'll leave that part out. 
One, you told us, but two, you also didn't leave it out in your uh, square intro. My favorite food is peeled chestnuts. Yep. Her eyes look crazy. My least favorite food is unpeeled chestnuts. Of course. <laughs> Aren't you surprised? They're both chestnuts. Yeah, they are both chestnuts. Also, I love how she has like a bow uh, uh, at the top of her shoe. That's pretty cute. Uh, um, <laughs> and hey, did you know kangaroos can jump backwards? Interesting. And, and, and believe it or not, snakes have ears. Ew! <laughs> what the fuck? Yes, yes, that's all very nice. <laughs> Our next introduction is Monica. Can we please explain why all of you are going by full names, but Monica is literally just Monica? The worst part is, is this game actually came out before um, Doki Doki, and we already have, you know, there's already Giffany who, 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 who gives off heavy Monica vibes. Now we have a literal character from a VN series called Just Monica. Come on. This is stupid. Okies. Okies. Aw. She's pretty cute, I'm not gonna lie. Monica is a mage. Ah, okay, so she's a mage. That that explains that. Her eyes look even crazier than the others. What the fuck? She actually looks like a robot. Jesus. Monica is called Monica. Monica's a mage in the Warriors of Hope. Yes, Monica is called Monica. Man, I feel like they're even almost they might as well just say just Monica at this point. Her eyes are, look so wild. The way they draw eyes in this show is, or this series is weird. Also, really cool though. Um, let's see if I'm right. I, I, let's see if I can go two for two. I predicted Kotoko's uh, little ultimate. Let's see if hers is, I'm going with literature, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's math. I was known as little ultimate homeroom while I was in elementary school. Well, I was never fucking guessing homeroom. What the hell? You might think there are no ultimates and commons in a class like homeroom, but there are. Interesting. For me, my skill isn't really about uniting people. It's about getting them all to help me. Wow. That was a really sweet way to say, oh yeah, I know how to manipulate everyone to get them to do exactly what I want. Oh my god, I swear to fuck. This girl's name is literally just Monica. If this girl turns out to be some sort of fucking demon lord like little mini Junko, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Because, you know, it is interesting. I've talked about how this is possibly the first game without Junko as the, in some form or fashion, as the main villain. So, I swear if this girl just becomes another Junko, I'm gonna lose my mind. Believe it or not, I bring together a lot of wonderful people. That is very sus. I am suspicious. It would be nice if you could be a wonderful person for Monica too. I hate the way she's saying that. She, oh my God, she's already coming off like a little manipulative bitch. Oh God, I, I'm already terrified. Honestly, part of my horror is just her name is Monica, which would be fine if she had a last name, but it's also literally, it's the same scenario where like all the others have Japanese names and she's just Monica for some reason. Like, what the fuck? And when I attended elementary school, I was called the Lil Ultimate Homeroom. All right. I'm sure you're familiar with it, right? Oh, I kind of like the way she bounces her around like that. That's actually really cute. Monica just loves homeroom. The first hour of the day when we can share our thoughts. The logo on her wheelchair is wild, though. And that is why, even in the Warriors of Hope, I'm the life of the party. Interesting. Uh, but you are familiar with the Warriors of Hope. I mean, based on what we saw on television, I guess a little bit. Mm, no. The Warriors of Hope are heroes who save the world from demons. Isn't that amazing? I suppose. We're a party of heroes that hunt down demons. But nobody really wants me in the group. I'm assuming your concept of demons is based on, uh, given, given what your goal here is, I'm assuming it's adults? And I'm the party leader, which makes me the number one king of this town. It's interesting that, um... He's got scratches all over the, um, uh, Masaru has scratches all over him and also has a bandage on his 
on his face and on his knees. So I wonder, he is little ultimate PE. That could be either because like he's really like, um, like he does a lot of like um, physical stuff or it could be for a darker reason. I could see it going either way, honestly. That might just be a harmless design choice or that might be, there might be a more fucked up reason for it. Uh, um, you, you kids are just joking, right? With demons and kings. Trust me, kids don't joke like this. Joking around? Oh, you just triggered them. Oh, I love that echo effect. That was actually really cool to, to emphasize how large of a room this is. I mean, yeah. you guys are just kids, right? For a bunch of kids to be doing this kind of stuff. Just oh. kids. Oh my god, bro bro's becoming a JoJo's character. Huh? What the fuck? Aw, that's the only thing I can say. Just aw. Damn. Since you're an about to be, we were thinking, well, doesn't matter. You're clearly a demon. Oh, because she's like a I guess I guess she's like a teenager or whatever, so so in their mind she's like in between over so like they weren't sure whether whether to treat her as a kid or a adult interesting <clears throat> is that why they wanted i guess that would explain why monica referred to her as big sis adults children the power structure remains the same the subjects have merely been switched i mean you literally are trying to make a city with no adults so i don't know if that's necessarily the same power structure with our monokumas You'll be nothing more than a squashed bug beneath our feet. Jesus. Splattered like the sound of bloody chopped meat. <laughs> Intestines falling out of you like sausages. <laughs> I think Jotaro is having a little too much fun right now. Oh, stop that, Jotaro. If you say it like that, she'll think we're joking. Yeah, you're de they definitely aren't joking, uh, Komaru. And don't, don't, don't. There should be no reason you think they are joking based on everything you've seen so far already in this game. Huh? Our Monokumas? So the ones controlling those Monokumas out there are... That's right! Isn't it so cool? The Monokumas obey any order we give them. So my question is... How did this come about? Are you guys in cahoots uh, with the remnants? Is this something that somehow Nagito prepared for you? Is is there someone else beside, behind the scenes helping you? Like, how did you g get your hands on all these Monokumas that do your bidding? All thanks to Monica's magic. What the fuck? Well, I guess I just got an answer immediately, but also uh, Nagisa's face looks crazy right there. Yeah, that's our mage. She can use magic even without magic circles. Interesting. So, so Monica's controlling them and hasn't said how, I assume, like the actual answer. Also, um, it's weird. I just mentioned this in another series, but it, this came up, I think, recently. But Masaru's wearing number 10 on the back of his shirt. And if you notice, the, the shirt underneath kind of with those stripes kind of give off soccer vibes. Um, obviously soccer, the world sport, but also I would say one of the most popular sports in Japan. Baseball is definitely number one, but soccer is up there, of course. And um, so his whole outfit gives off big soccer vibes, especially because, again, number 10 traditionally is kind of the ace number on a soccer squad. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You're so nice. Oh, I already can tell she's going to be the worst. Monica's smile is so adorbs. Oh, I just want to smother you in syrup and eat you up. And they're literally all in love with her, too. Oh, this is terrible. N no! Stop it! Stop! Stop? Which part? Yeah, I don't think they're particularly interested in stopping. Also, you notice how there's a giant ladder over there in this room in the back, uh, to the, just a little to the right of uh, Masaru. Like, there's a giant ladder. I wonder if we're going to have to, like, fight and, like, run up that ladder or something. If what you're saying is true, please stop all of this. Although, I don't know if we're actually going to fight the kids, necessarily. We will not. We will never stop until we've completed our paradise. Interesting. Paradise? Oh, 
You didn't hear our address? A paradise made up children, by children, for children. Interesting. We're gonna kill all the adults in this town and make a paradise just for kids. Fair enough. Isn't it awesome? No school or homework in paradise. Woohoo! Yeah, of course you'd be hyped about that. Why must fireflies <laughs> So young. Oh my god, that came out of nowhere, but honestly, honestly, that's legitimately, like, unironically rather uh, philosophical of you, Jotaro. What the fuck? And since our paradise is for children only, there won't be any more pedophiles either. Ah, shit! God damn it! No, oh, no, that's the third strike! Oh no, it's not a co it's not a coincidence anymore, it's a pattern. No! Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. Here we fucking go again. God damn it. All right. All right. That might as well confirm it. I are I, that's all I needed to see. Kotoko was uh definitely with definitely definitely like she was definitely essayed at some point and and we're probably going to get into that. That's the third reference. That is the third reference in the entire game to, like, explicit, like, content, and all three times. Well, there's been two references to explicit content, both from her. Obviously, she's cute, and she was in drama. She was in theater. I could already see a million ways that that could go wrong. And so you have the two, you have the, you have the, the joke she made in the video right before the OP. You have this comment right here about pedos, and on top of that... The, the 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 salty comment. Yeah, she's totally. So these these kids, I bet, are all gonna represent different types of childhood trauma, and Kotoko's is gonna be the worst. I'll just leave it at that. But you got yeah, hundred percent. Oh, this is gonna get fucked. Oh, I. I mean, she's not wrong. I mean, to be fair, if there was one pro to a child only utopia, that would probably be it. But. Um, the fact that she's saying that, I feel like she's particularly passionate about that. That's one of her main motivations for doing this, and why she's part of this group. But can we keep the ice cream store? The ice cream didn't do anything wrong. Facts, Jotaro. The ice cream never does anything wrong. What are you saying? What are you talking about? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to make any sense. Oh, God. I don't know what's funnier. Uh, I actually really like the art of Monica on the right of her, like, uh, 2D sprite. But her fucking 3D sprite just going all over the place. Okay, so she's a brat that, that, that whines and complains when she doesn't get what she wants. And that's part of her manipulation tactics to manipulate... Uh, Jotaro, Kotoko, uh, Nagisa, and Masaru, I bet. That's all! Jesus Christ. If Monica wants it, it happens! That's how it is! Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Th th this is bad. Monica's mad! And they're- wow, they almost seem afraid of her. It's going to be alright, Monica. Please, don't get upset. It's oh. all going according to plan. Oh, that's interesting. I thought it would just be a thing where they feel bad for her, but the way the way they're reacting, it almost sounds like they're afraid of her. Oh shit. Oh god, is she really I was half joking, but if she actually is like a mini Junko, I'm gonna lose my mind. That's right. If Monica says it, then white is black. Cats are dogs and um what else? Also, the design of uh, Jotaro is really cool, I have to admit. Like, I really like the way his, like, helmet thing looks. Like, that, he looks really cool. Oh, please. Oh, please don't get mad. We'll kill a lot of adults. See? Jesus! Smile, okay? Oh, my God! That was a horrifying line. I actually really like the designs of all the kids, to be honest. They look cool. Monica, in a weird way, probably looks the least interesting, but I think... You know, but, like, her eyes are so, like, captivating that I think... And I think that's what they were going for. Like, eyes that, like, could look right through your soul type vibe. Hey! How dare you make Monica mad! Oh, great. We pissed off the children. 
whoopty fucking do now kick their ass they're like four feet tall beat the shit out of these kids uh komaru i don't give a fuck these kids out here are like apparently fucking mass murderers and shit like fuck them kids that's the last straw as the leader i'm gonna hunt you down H hunt jesus let us play a game you will be our demon prey oh lovely it's a really fun game. <laughs> a godly game. <laughs> I guess if anything, anyone would know about godly games, it would be the priest. It was Monica's idea, after all. Of course it was Monica's idea. And here I thought, Masaru, I hear I thought you were the leader. Yet it seems like you guys do whatever Monica says. And the name of the game is... Demon hunting? Ta-da! Demon hunting! I'm gonna assume this is a reference. That's going over my head, but this, I'm assuming this is, a, especially with the shadows and everything. They actually kind of, Jotaro looks really cool. Kotoko, I think that's Kotoko. Yeah, she looks kind of scary. Monica looks horrifying with that little drawn on smiley face. What the fuck? I'm assuming that's Nagisa in the back who just seems to not care. Interesting. Demon hunting is a game where you release demons into Toa City. They're the target. Oh, lovely. So we're one of the demons, huh? It's a super fun game where the warriors of hope fight to see who takes down the demon first. Wow, that sounds super fun. And our very own Monica came up with it. I bet she did. See, Monica? We're going to play our special game. No need to be upset now, right? Oh, I already hate the dynamic between Monica and the rest of the Warriors of Hope. Like, you could just... It, it reeks of toxicity. And if I'm right that all these kids have gone through trauma, that makes it even worse that Monica is then, like, manipulating them, these kids that have been through a lot. I'm just... Like, again, I'm not positive, but I think, I think Monica's the, like, villain here. Like, there's a chance it could be Nagisa, but Nagisa seems pretty... Nagisa seems like too reasonable of an individual. Like, I'm sure Nagisa has been through some shit that's led him down this path, but he just doesn't feel like a, a Danganronpa lead villain. But Monica is giving me vibes. I could be wrong, though. It's definitely Monica or Nagisa, though. Oh, or... or... Monica's excited, or it's Nagito. I will say, it absolutely could just be Nagito that's the main villain of this game. That would be hilarious, because he's not even in the intro. No. By target, you mean? One of the other reasons I think it might be Nagisa is Nagisa's name actually comes up last on the in the intro of all the... It wasn't Monica at the end, it was Nagisa at the end, so... I'm wondering if, like, Nagisa will be the final boss... I don't know. I don't know if we're going to actually, like, fight these kids or what. Like, I don't know where this is going, necessarily. You, hurry up and prepare the device. Oh, it's... Oh, shit. What is this? Well, it's Monokuma related. Ah. This wristband is a custom-made device given to the targets of the game. I had a feeling that that's who you was referring to. It's also great to hear you, man. I fucking love Nagito so much. Dude, he looks sick there. I love how he's just looming over the uh, the weird hair thing of uh, Komaru. It would be best if you didn't try to remove it. Any tampering with it, and you'll go boom. All right, so it'll explode. All right. It, I, dude, it's so funny. I make the, I made the joke about all the girls, like the OST that was playing earlier and all the girls playing this getting wet or coming for Nagito or whatever. But it actually is funny because they literally fetishized him. They literally put him in a collar and chain. It's actually crazy. Boom. Yes, boom. Okay, then. Now we're ready. All right, let's go hunting. Sure, why not? That sounds like fun. Wait, 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 hold on. This is a prank, isn't it? You're just kidding around. Yeah, I don't think they're pranking you, girl. 
mean, look at this fucking room. Like, where the fuck are we? This is like a fucking chapel. Like, what the fuck? You've seen what we've accomplished so far. This is no joke. For an adult, you sure are dead. And we've seen the other rooms in this place. It's like a very high-tech building, whatever this is. Their home base or whatever. No, no, you don't understand. I'd be no good at this game. If you throw me into that town, I, I just get killed immediately. I'm that's no fun, right? Ooh, so modest. But we know you don't die easy. You passed that test earlier. Hmm. That was only because I had this gun. Shut the fuck up. Remember what Nagito told you. Anyway, that test was splendid. At least she said that really softly. It was amazing how you were able to evade those Monokumas and make it this far. Yeah, it's almost like Nagito, yeah, wants Komaru to like... I guess... I wonder if he wants Ko... Okay, theory. Theory time again. So, again, I'm assuming this takes place in between Danganronpa 1 and 2. And if that is the case... Nagito was an ultimate despair, but was still like a hope Coomer. And I wonder if, like, the. Because everything was televised, he knows that Makoto was essentially responsible for what happened to Junko in a way. And so, to pursue hope in, like, the most fucked up way possible. That's why he's he's working with Komaru because he knows that Komaru is Makoto's little sister. I know that was really vague, but I'm assuming there's something like that going on where Nagito is interested in Komaru because of her uh, blood relation to Makoto. I guess it's all thanks to my advice from earlier. Hmm? Yeah, shut the fuck up, <laughs> Komaru. Advice from earlier? Oh my god. However... Even after you meet everyone, be sure to keep that gun of yours a secret. If you don't want to die, that is. Uh. Yeah, you idiot. Hey, no talking without the leader's permission. You are just a servant. Hey, he had to step in when he was needed most to keep the game progressing the way he wants it to. Next time you talk without getting the okay from me, I'm gluing your mouth shut. The worst part is Nagito would probably be into that. <laughs> that is quite a scary thought. Oh my god. Well, let's get on with it. Sure, why not? W why? What? Why are you doing something so cruel? I didn't even do anything bad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow, that was actually... Uh, that was, there was something really funny about them all laughing so hard at that. Also, I love how it just says Warriors of Hope. Oh, jeez. You're too funny. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard my cheeks hurt. Nice. We play the games because they're fun. Duh. That's the only reason? Yeah, why do they need a better reason? You're only surprised because you aren't used to this way of doing things. Yeah, they're kids after all. This is just what we like. We do it because it's fun. That's so fucked up though. And that truly is the only reason. That sounds weirdly similar to Monica, or uh, Jesus Christ, to Junko terminology. Like, you know, despair for despair's sake. In this case, it's fun for fun's sake, no matter how fucked up it is. It's weirdly almost like a child's take on despair. It's actually really interesting. Because, like, I feel like we're getting, like... Because these, these five, essentially, from what we've seen, seem to be, like, despairs. Regardless of, um... Like, they probably... I, I'm gonna, again, theorize that these kids, like, have fucked up backstories. And they probably... Like, we're living through the experiences of the tragedy, and, and I'm gonna assume that they were inspired by Junko when they watched the killing school, uh, the killing game, the killing school life, and I bet that they were inspired from her and from that, but in the, instead of inspired by Makoto and the others, they were inspired by Junko and they wanted to be, you know, like despairs like her. That's, that's my guess, because they felt like 
that they had been given a shit deal, a raw deal at life because, you know, Monica's disabled. Um, Kotoko has potentially been fucked up in horrible ways. Uh, Jotaro was basically seemingly, like, um, abandoned and mistreated by his parents. And then whatever happened to uh, Masaru and... Nagisa. I have no idea what's up with Nagisa. Masaru, maybe, maybe, maybe like physical abuse potentially. I don't know. Searching for meaning in the meaningless is for adults. Children are untainted by such futility. What a line! Searching for meaning in the meaninglessness is for adults. Children are untainted by such futility. That's actually really poetic, but also, and very, I feel like Nagisa is gonna have some banger quotes in this game, but, um, yeah, I do like to search for meaning in the meaninglessness, not because, not because it's futile, but because I just find it interesting, honestly. In fact, that's something I do a lot on this channel with the reactions and uh, let's plays and all the stuff we do. There's a lot of searching for meaning in the meaninglessness. That's a trademark of the flaming shark, I'd argue. But to tell you the truth, I would rather not play this game. Interesting. Why? Because you think it's barbaric or... You seem to have no problem with killing adults, but... There is still much work to be done to mm. build our paradise, yet here we are playing games. I can understand that. You're acting a little too mature, though, for the group, to be honest. Sounding a little too much like an adult, Nagisa. Why? Why don't you stop? We cannot do that. What the this fuck? This is Monica's game. She said she wants it done, so it will be done. What the fuck? They treat her like a fucking god? This is terrifying. Monica is the princess. Everyone on our team tries to grant the princess's wish. I mean, I used goddess, but maybe princess is more fitting because, I mean... Interesting. Yeah, we got a little despair princess right here. What the fuck is wrong with Monica? And why do these others care like i get that that's her talent but what the fuck she really yeah i i wonder if the other four are really i have a feeling that the other four are just horribly abused children that aren't really that evil and then monica's gonna be the literal devil in fact i wouldn't be surprised i'm throwing out a big theory right here how much do you want to bet that monica that wasn't even isn't even disabled like she can walk no problem that would be crazy but I, I, I honestly, I almost wonder if that's just a manipulation tactic. I'm getting those type of vibes from her. I feel like there could be a scene at the end of the game where she just gets right out of her chair and starts walking or something. That would be nuts. And I love what Monica loves. I bet you do. So that's basically the situation. Okay, so uh, Koltiko definitely simp's pretty hard for Monica. Thank you, Nagisa. Even though you're so busy. You did all this work for the sake of my game. Aw. I'll have to bake you some delicious cookies later as thanks. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my god, that's so cute. He's so fucking embarrassed. Holy shit. Okay, so Kotoko simps for uh, Monica. Nagisa simps for Monica. So those two at the very least are in love with her. And who knows about Jotaro and uh, Masaru. But I wouldn't be surprised if all four of them are in love with her. Aw, that's yeah. so not fair. Monica's cookies too. I bet you do. Oh my god. Look at the way that she's just flinging her arms. Like, that is such a ridiculous animation. I love that. Also, I love the way she's puffing her cheeks. That's pretty cute. But, um... Yeah. You see how the first person to react to that was Kotoko after uh, what Nagisa said? That, that... Yeah. That's very intentional. Hey, Monica! What about me? The leader? Yeah, because the difference is that I think Masaru wants cookies, but I think Koltiko specifically wants Monica's cookies. Wait, how can you kids just keep smiling like that? You're, you're not normal. That's such a wild face that uh, Kamaru has. But yeah, what was your first clue that these kids were not normal? Jesus Christ, Kamaru. Hmm, of course an adult sees this as abnormal. I feel like a kid would also see you guys as abnormal, but abnormal doesn't mean bad, but in this particular case, I think uh, Komaru meant it in a negative connotation, for sure. But who cares what adults say? What the fuck? Also, Komaru Naegi? She was freaking out and immediately calmed down. 
Almost like her freakouts are all an act. In your current situation, you don't have the right to say a thing. You cannot choose your path. What the fuck? Because this place you're in, it isn't a path at all. Oh my god, this voice acting. What? Yeah, yeah, great response. And that was also a really good Nani from uh, Komaru. You are not on a path. You are falling into an abyss. A darkness gaping open beneath your feet. What the fuck? Um... Yeah, all of a sudden, Monica just went full despair on us. You are just going to fall and fall. Don't you feel the pull of gravity? Holy shit, her voice actress is killing it. What the fuck? What do you mean? Like, she's got such a cutesy voice, but when she gets serious, she becomes so fucking horrifying. She means this. Oh? Cutscene? Cutscene? Oh, well, it's this music. Oh my god, it's a literal trapdoor! Oh my god, they, they look terrifying in that shot. I wish I could have paused on that shot. What the hell? What the fuck? We're in the sky? What the hell? That was some sort of ship? Also, when did she get a parachute? The poor girl holding up her skirt. What the hell? That's a crazy freaking ship. What in the world? A child's ears are wonderful ears. <laughs> what the fuck? A child's eyes are adorable eyes. A child's mouth is a great big mouth. What the fuck? Why is it so big? I don't want to talk about why kids' mouths are big, please. So, can we move on to something else? To gobble up the demons. I love how they were all saying that at their own point, like it wasn't synced up. That actually made it sound more realistic. <laughs> Damn, they laughed for a while there. Look at the way they're moving, too. Uh, Nagisa and, uh, and, um, Nagisa's not moving at all, and for the most part, uh, Kotoko as well, and then the others are just having a grand old time, especially the, uh, the boys not named Nagisa. Alright, game on! I wonder how much more... It's interesting that we're getting perspective from the Warriors of Hope. I do wonder how much longer the prologue is, because... Usually with Danganronpa, I like to do the whole prologue in one episode. Um, I don't know if I'll do it when for V3, because I know everything in V3 is, like, longer than normal. But um, I'm kind of winging it, but my plan is to do the whole prologue in this episode. I just don't know how much longer we have. Let's say this particular demon will be worth an extra high score because it upset us. Fair enough. <laughs> then it looks like I'll win when I catch it. A game is different than reality, so that means even I can actually win. God, Jotaro fucking hates himself, Jesus Christ. My, my, it's rare to see Jotaro so pumped, but it also makes him extra gross. Wow. Also, um, I actually want to say two things. I actually really like that color on, um, on, uh, Kotoko. It's not quite black, but I think it actually complements the pink and the white really well. But also, her face is ridiculous. It's so funny. What the fuck? That don't matter. I really At like the, the designs the day, of these the kids. They look cool. And I feel like they the their designs fit their personalities pretty well. Now, now, it doesn't matter who wins. Just make sure you don't fight while playing the game. Mm. Well, anyway, do you guys want to get a cola or something? Yeah, I can smash a soda after uh, after this recording, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to eat anything or not. It's uh two, it's almost three o'clock in the morning, so, it, you know, I'm probably going to be up all night and go get some food and when um, stuff opens up in the late morning, early afternoon, uh, you know, or whatever, get some lunch, but that's like probably seven, eight hours away or whatever. Ooh, a soda sounds great. 
Someone go buy some. Leader's orders. Why would you need to buy the soda? Like, even if it, even if you were gonna do it, even if you were gonna go to a vending machine, couldn't you just like destroy the vending machine? Like, this is. I know this city was like okay until you guys showed up, but like you guys are fucking it up. Can't you just find a vending machine and just fuck it up or something, or find a store and just steal some? Why would you buy it? <laughs> oh god, oh god, is that Monica's? <laughs> that was a little too. <laughs> For my taste. And just like that, the pieces are in place. All that's left now is to wait for the despair. Oh my god, she's literally a mini Junko. What the hell? <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually really curious to get more of Monica though now. Alright. Do your best, Miss Protagonist. I fucking hate you, Nagito. I'm really curious, though, because Monica seems like she's literally a mini Junko, and they're just being really open about the fact, and, like, it's the first time they're being, like, really open about a villain from early on, except for, ironically, Nagito, and speaking of fucking Nagito with his bullshit, calling her the protagonist. With your lack of distinct characteristics. Shut the fuck so up. So common, so dull, so boring. God, I love this man so much. Oh, oh, was that the end of the... Yeah, that was the end of the prologue. Okay. Do we get, like, a save point to be continued? Yep, that's normal. I really like the, like, prologue graphics and stuff. That's really cool. Okay, so we do get to save. Okay, so... If... How does this work? So if I save... Okay, so we have save slots. No, I wanted to save. What the fuck? No. Oh, God. No, I don't want to see this god damn it um oh fuck oh what the hell what do i do? god damn it i actually missed my save point oh fuck for fuck's sake um you know what i'm just going to i'm just gonna call it here uh i'm gonna make this the end of the video and like a fucking idiot i skipped my save point so I was thinking about maybe doing another recording anyways, so I might, um, but what I'm actually, I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to stop here and then real quick, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to turbo through it and like skip everything and, uh, get to that save point again. Cause, oh man, I, I didn't know that it would just boot me out and then just force like, God damn it. That was so dumb of me. Well, I know now, so I won't make that mistake again. But uh, nevertheless, that was the prologue for Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. And uh, yeah, that was really fun. I really, really enjoyed that episode. And I'm really excited to um, dive further into this game. We got a lot of... Like I said, I went into this game with a lot of theories about what the game could potentially be about. And through this prologue, we got a dose of uh, what this game really is. And it was interesting to it was interesting to learn the premise. It was interesting to see the uh, the opening sequence. Um, we we basically confirmed that Toko is a main character, even though Toko has yet to show up at this point. I'm assuming Toko will be in Chapter 1, though, probably, because she is a main character of the game, For seemingly. She seems to be the other... It seems like the title is referring to Komaru and Toko, which kind of makes sense in a weird way, because Toko, honestly, of all the survivors of the Killing School Life, Toko is the one that I could most describe, I feel like, as an ultra-despair girl. And we've seen that Komaru does kind of suffer with her own issues with despair. So in a weird way, I kind of understand that title for these two. It's actually interesting. Um, because I kind of assume that the title was referring to villains for obvious reasons. But it does seem like the title is referring to Komaru and Toko. Um, which is interesting. Because they're clearly not villains. But in a weird way, I guess they do... They have an interesting relationship with despair, both of them. Um, so I, I, I could I could see what they were going for with the title, and it's a very Dongan Rampa title nonetheless. So I'm 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 vibing with it. I'm I'm really really excited for some more um, Dongan Rampa Ultra Despair Girls. It's gonna be really fun to jump into Chapter One. I didn't see the title of Chapter One, and if you guys want to know what I'm gonna do. 
I'm basically, I'm going to actually escape out of this the second I, uh, I'm going to escape out of this. I'm going to cancel. And then before the next recording, I'm going to, you know, super fast skip through the game and get back to get back to this spot. And we'll, um, we'll be ready next time. But now I'm prepared because that's what I normally would do is I'd normally, because I know what I hate about Dong and Rapa games. And it looks like this game's the same way is when you finish a chapter and like save, it immediately just throws you into the next chapter. It doesn't give you like an option to like start it or it doesn't give you an option to like return to main menu or anything. It just immediately just jumps you into the next chapter. So when I, uh, when I do these episodes, I always have to like save. And then after I save, I basically immediately escape out. So I don't see anything and cancel out of the game. Um, that's, that's how I normally uh, handle it. But obviously I kind of fucked it up this time because I didn't, I didn't fully know what was going on. And like I said, I know that that won't happen again, but that's what happened in this particular instance. And it just kind of is what it is to be perfectly honest. But I did really enjoy that. I thought it was really cool. We met, of course, the Warriors of Hope, Masaru, Nagisa, Monica, Kotoko, and Jatoro. And they seem really interesting. They seem like they all have their own issues. And I'm assuming they're going to each have their own like reasons for how they became this way. And, um, Given the fact that usually these games have, what, six chapters typically, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like, yeah. Didn't both the first game and the second game have a prologue in six chapters? If I'm not crazy, I believe that's how... I believe that's it, right? Six, it's six, right? Yeah, it's six. So both the first and second game had a prologue in six chapters. So I'm assuming, even if this game is shorter, that we're going to follow the same story structure. And that would make a lot of sense because I'm wondering if each chapter is going to focus on a specific Warrior of Hope. Because we have five Warriors of Hope's Hope, and that could either be just that we only have five chapters instead of six. Or potentially the sixth chapter could be Nagito. Um, if Nagito is like actually the final boss of this game, which I could definitely see that being the case. I guess we'll have to see how it goes, but, um, whatever the case may be, I am super excited to see where this game goes. Although I'm a little concerned about Kotoko. I feel like that's going to go into some really, really fucked up territory. If I'm reading the, uh, the tea leaves right here from what I've seen so far, but, um, this is one of those cases where I feel like they're implying a lot. I feel like there's a lot of um there's a lot of interesting implications. I should be able to get back to my spot by the way pretty quickly because I I can I can skip all the talking cuz I can skip events to get back to this. So that actually shouldn't take me that long to do that. But um I'm like really excited to see like where this goes and I'm really excited to um I'm really excited to actually explore these characters a little more and see like what this game's getting up to because it is interesting because I guess what we're going for in this game, obviously there's going to be interesting stuff with Komaru and presumably Toko, which is going to be fun. But I think what's interesting is it looks like this game is going to explore what could drive a kid to this extreme, right? Like it seems like that's going to be thematic and it's interesting because it's not really something we've explored because the game is always focused on like, you know, teenage, young adult, like age range characters. We haven't really focused on characters younger or older. And even if you even if you include the uh, the supplemental material that I've read in the lead up to this, Danganronpa Zero and Danganronpa If, the only character that I would say is a significant character that that is like an older, like a, like an adult, like a full blown adult, like a, like a, like, you know, thirties, forties onward. Cause like the, every, the characters are all either like teenagers or in their twenties. Uh, but the first older person that I feel like was a relatively significant character was, um, was the headmaster, uh, Kyoko's father in Danganronpa Zero. Like he had a pretty relevant role in the story. And, um, I would say he's the only character, uh, in the entire story up to this point that, would that was like an older character that had a significant role and on the flip side no characters really younger than you know like uh you know anything below a high schooler has ever been like so you know anything like um has been relevant either so this is the first time we're getting characters uh this young having any relevance in the story which is really interesting and i'm excited to see where they go with uh like i said jotaro Monica, Nagisa, Kotoko, and um, 
Masaru. It's going to be really interesting. And I think like the, the, the psychology behind these characters is going to be in some ways a little different than what we're used to for uh, Danganronpa. But in some ways, I think will also be very reminiscent of things we've seen in the first two games, as well as the uh, other material that we've read. And uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I I definitely think the gameplay, which like we've barely actually done any of the gameplay. There wasn't much in the prologue, but from what I've seen, I'm sure it's going to get harder. And, you know, maybe we'll have different types of enemies or whatever besides just the Monokumas. But I definitely could see like the gameplay is going to be very basic. And I don't think the gameplay is going to be like super interesting necessarily. I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll work. I think it'll get the job done. It's not going to be shit, but it's just going to be fine. But I definitely think the mileage that we're going to get out of this game is going to come from the story. And now I know what this game is. It's like a third-person shooter, with, but still kind of a visual novel. Like, it has a ton of dialogue. Like, this game was filled with dialogue. I'm wondering if when we get into... I'm wondering if that was because it was the prologue or just the way the game's going to be. Because I'm wondering if there's going to be that much dialogue in the main chapters or if it's going to be a little more balanced with uh, more gameplay. Because I think we're definitely going to get more gameplay uh, than we've had so far. But it's going to be interesting to see how all of that looks. Because I'm definitely intrigued by what we've gotten so far. And... Well, you know, the gameplay is what it is. I'm super fucking excited for the story of this game because what we've gotten so far of the story has been super fucking interesting. And I'm like, I'm really excited. So it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. It's fun to be playing a Danganronpa proper game again, even if it is not necessarily like a game where we're doing trials and investigations and stuff. It's a game where we're, you know, we're shooting people and we're, um, and, and, you know, on a, on an adventure that's different from what was in Danganronpa 1 and 2. But it's a different change of pace uh, for sure. But I, it's just exciting to be back in this world and actually playing a game in this world. And holy shit, was I thrilled when I realized this is fucking voiced. Oh my god. That is so much better for me. I know some of you guys enjoy my shitty voices, but... It, it just sounds so much better and it actually makes the experience a lot easier for me because I can focus all my efforts talking to make comments on the story and just, you know, give you my opinions and theories and all that fun stuff. I don't have to focus on trying to voice characters, which is always a, or even just reading more than I'd have to. Like I just, the fact that they're, that they're reading the dialogue for me makes everything so much easier for me. And I think actually adds a lot to the video because I, I think it, it allows me to really, I think, um, pick my spots a lot better, I think, with um, just various comments. And I'm a big fan of having my VNs voiced, personally. Whether whether it's, you know, the, the fact that it's voiced in English is crazy, but even if it was, like, even having it fully voiced in Japanese for, you know, whatever game is, is fantastic because I'll rock with whatever. I just want, if I get voice acting of, of either language, it's just... They're doing my job for me, and it allows me to just focus on on actually like enjoying the story and fucking giving my my commentary and my critiques and my my theories and all my different thoughts and reactions, which is uh, what I do best. It's what I enjoy doing. I like I like uh, breaking it down in real time, right? Um, and I think and I think I do it. I think I that's something I do quite well. I think I, I think I bring a fun experience, and I I know that a lot of you guys have really enjoyed how I did with the first two games. And I think, I think especially with this game being voiced, I think that's going to make this an even smoother experience. So I'm really looking forward to that. That actually made me slightly more hyped for this game, both because it means I don't have to voice, but it also means we're going to hear great fucking voice acting this entire game. Like I'm thrilled. Like, cause I'm already thinking about Toko and Jack getting voiced the whole game. And I'm like, fuck Yeah. I am so here for that because that is one of my favorite voice acting performances, especially Genocide Jill slash Jack. So um, the thoughts of getting a ton of of Jack in this game is hype. Uh, while I would not have predicted Nagi uh, no, Nagito's sister, Jesus Christ, could you imagine? While I didn't, while I wouldn't have predicted Makoto's sister and Toko to be potentially the main characters, I am here for Toko being a main force in this game. I'm so here for that. That's awesome. And also, it's really interesting to have Makoto's sister, and I'm wondering when or if Makoto's going to get involved in the story. I wonder if that's going to kind of be something that they kind of tease us with and don't get, or if Makoto's actually going to pop up in the story at some point. 
It'll be interesting to see where that goes. And especially if we end up paired with Toko, because again, Toko, like Byakuya and Makoto, is part of the Future Foundation, from my understanding. So she's going to, and also, obviously, she'll know everything, and she'll be able to tell, um, she'll be able to tell um, Komaru that her brother's alive, and he's doing good, and he's helping people, and he's in the Future Foundation, and Toko will be able to give her context uh, beyond what the uh, Future Foundation members did before they died or whatever in um, earlier in the prologue, right before she got, uh, I guess, kidnapped, I guess would be the best way to say captured. Um, but yeah, that was a really, really fun uh, first episode, and it, it feels good to be back in the Danganronpa saddle with an actual Let's Play, and I'm really excited to see where this game goes. Curious how long we will spend on this game. We ended up having 18 episodes for Danganronpa 1 and 22 episodes for Danganronpa 2. Uh, I'm expecting this game to be shorter than both, but I don't really know. It might take a similar amount of time. I don't really know. But like I said, I do like to talk a lot and, you know, really take my time with games like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if this game drags on longer than you guys might expect. But whatever the case may be, I hope you're excited for the Let's Plays, and this is the first time I've been doing a Let's Play since. Uh, this this is now a slot in the rotation. This is slot one, so this isn't going to be coming out on a set day of the week. It's going to be coming out rotationally when it's uh, its turn. So sometimes it's going to come out a little more often than every seven days, and sometimes it might come out a little longer, whatever. But um, it won't be on a set day of the week. So uh, just keep your eyes open for new episodes, and they'll pop up when they pop up. And if you want to keep track, obviously... Um, I'm sure most of you probably know how the rotation works unless you're just here for Dong and Romper or whatever, but, um, they'll be coming out every once in a while. So, uh, look forward to them, but obviously they will be long episodes. Um, you know, we, we basically 90 minutes is the minimum, but we almost always go over two hours. Very rarely are we under two hours on the let's play content. So they're usually long episodes when you get them. So I, that, that's partially because I like to record longer videos in general. I do it with my reactions too, but it's also because I talk a lot and I go through games slower than the majority of people that do content, like do Let's Plays. So because my Let's Play style involves a lot of talking about random nonsense, to compensate for that, I give you longer videos. So I still get through a lot of content in one video, even if I'm getting through it slower than your average potato. But whatever the case may be, I think that's going to do it for this video. I think I've said everything I want to say. There was a lot of interesting stuff in this episode. I'm really excited for chapter one, which I didn't see the title of, but we'll get to that in the next video, whatever it's called. But um, nevertheless, I'm super excited for some more Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. I think this is going to be a great experience, and I hope you guys are all along with me for the entire ride as we start to almost wind it down. I mean, we still have a ways to go. We still have the anime after this, and we'll eventually have V3 to play, but we've actually made significant progress in the Danganronpa franchise at this point, so it's kind of crazy that we're already at UDG, but whatever the case may be, um, I think that's going to do it. So uh, if you want to support the channel, my Patreon's down below in the description, as is my Discord server. Anywho, Without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. The Flaming Shark, signing out. Oh, and by the way, if, again, you're new and you just found this Let's Play uh, in the description, my Danganronpa playlist will be in the description, which will have all my videos of Danganronpa 1, Danganronpa 2, Danganronpa 0, and Danganronpa If, and now Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. And if you're finding this in the future, it might also include potentially reactions to the DR3 anime. And if you're seeing this way in the future, it might also see uh, uh, my DRV3 Let's Play potentially. So there's a lot there. But at the time I'm recording this, it'll have... My full Danganronpa 1 Let's Play, Danganronpa 2 Let's Play, Danganronpa 0 Read Along, and Danganronpa If um, uh, Read Along. So that'll all be in there if you check that out. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.